It's the 1st of September, and that brings us to Northern Putnam County among the corn. It is rivalry night here throughout the county, and it has descended on Rochdale, Indiana, as we get set for the South Putnam Eagles to, get to take on the North Putnam Cougars. Tonight's game is brought to you by Endeavor Communications. End internet speeds up to a gig. Learn more at weendeavor.com. Dot com. Alongside Coach Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. I'm th so much to be. Thank you so much for being with us here tonight, Coach. Good to be with you again as well. Rivalry night. Nothing better than that right here in no Northern Putnam County. Yeah, Kurt. Always good to be uh, to be at a ball game with you too on a beautiful Friday night for high school football in Indiana. And it's a rivalry game. You never know what's going to happen uh, when uh, two county teams get uh, get together and uh, have a little uh, little dance out here on a Friday night. This is a uh, Rivalry that has gone back 35 years or so. North Putnam leads the all-time series 22 to 17. However, South Putnam has been on the receiving end of a victory the last two times in a row, and they come in on a hot streak. They're 2 and 0 to start the season. Yeah, South Putnam's had a great start to the season, and you just look at them uh, both offensively and defensively. They're scoring a lot of points. They're not giving up a lot of points. So North Putnam's going to have their uh, their work cut out for them tonight. Uh, against uh, the South Putnam uh, Eagles. Of course, North Putnam has certainly hit their stride offensively. They are averaging right around 25 points per game. The problem is they haven't really hit their stride defensively. They've given up 48 points per game through the first two. Yeah, and it's 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 going to be important, uh, especially offensively for North Putnam, that uh, they can uh, you know uh, slow down the, the South Putnam pass. Where South Putnam has seven and a half sacks already in two games and so they want to throw the football North Putnam does and so they're going to have to uh, they're going to have to do a good job in slowing down that pass rush. It is a beautiful night here in northern Putnam County. We are at North Putnam High School, the Cougar Den getting set for rivalry football here in the western part of the state. Coach, let's get your keys to the game for tonight's contest. What are you looking for here tonight? Okay, well first of all you've got to win the line of scrimmage and kind of alluded to that earlier uh, with uh, the ability South Putnam has to bring the heat on the quarterback North Putnam's going to have to win the line of scrimmage. Well, I always used to talk about getting five plus yards 50% of the time on first down. So I think the team that can do that consistently has a chance to win. And of course, turnovers are always big, especially in rivalry games. So both teams need to protect the football. North Putnam will be kicking the ball off to start things off here. It is a beautiful night on September 1st, Labor Day weekend. We're underway to get things going. It's a short kick, and it's going to be taken here by South Putnam right at about the 20-yard line. Some good kick coverage right there by the North Putnam special team. Yeah, great little pooch kick right there, and it looked like the uh, South Putnam uh, return team was a little confused on who was going to pick that ball up. Had to uh, just cover it up there inside the... Uh, 20 yard line or I'm sorry inside the the 15 yard line so uh, tough field position here for South Putnam we're going to see if their offense can go the length of the field or not Logan Sillery was the one who picked the ball up and was tackled out of bounds and so here we get our first look at the offense for South Putnam under the tutelage of head coach Chuck Sorrell and quarterback Wyatt Mullen who has been a three-year starter for this South Putnam squad yeah Wyatt Mullen can throw the football uh, he's a good athlete running with it too so on first down, they go right to the ground, and they will go to their running back. That is Colby Harcourt, and he jukes to the outside for a gain of about four yards. Hey, it's a little quick hitting inside zone play, and uh, got a good push on the left side of the uh, South Putnam line. He was able to bounce outside and uh, pick up a couple more yards. Again, there's that winning on first down a little bit here. It looks like uh, South Putnam gets the first one. Closer look at quarterback Wyatt Mullen, 2,400 career passing yards as a junior coming into this season. They hand the ball off to Harcourt again, and this time he is stuck right at the line of scrimmage, but he's able to fall forward for at least a yard. Yeah, Brogan Woodall from the secondary came up and made a nice tackle uh, to uh, hold, uh, hold the ball carrier to just one yard there. Again, the North Putnam defense really looking for a good weekend here tonight after giving up 40 points to North Montgomery in their first game and then 56 to Southmont just a week ago right here at North Putt. And now we have our first flag of the ball game. It's going to be a false start here against South Putnam. Yeah, those types of mistakes you don't want to have, especially when you're backed up on your own your own part of the field. Uh, it's a third down play. Now you're going to have third and very long. So, so far, so good here for the North Putnam defense. Again, the Cougars coached by head coach Scott Moore here in his second season with a career record of 4-8. and eight. 
Third down and a long 13 here for the Eagles. Going to the air for the first time tonight. And Mullen's going to have to scramble to the outside. Fires down the sideline. Nobody home. And it's going to be a three and out here for the defense of North Putnam. Yeah, good pressure there by North Putnam. On the, the previous play when uh, South Putnam jumped, you could see North Putnam was going to bring some pressure. And uh, after the penalty, they again, they brought six and were able to force the incompletion. That's a big stop for, uh, uh, for North Putnam here, the first drive of the game. So we get our first punt of the ball game here tonight. And it's going to be Wyatt Kendall who is the kicking specialist here for this South Putnam squad. He is also 14 of 14 on PATs this year. He gets a good boot into this one. It's going to go across midfield. No, it's going to take a Cougar bounce and settle right at the 45-yard line. Not a bad spot to start in plus territory on your first drive. No, it's a great uh, great uh, defensive stop there, defensive series for North Putnam, and now they get the ball in great field position. That snap was in the, was in the ground there. I think that might have... Uh, uh, caused uh, you know a little issue with the with the punt and uh, now North Putnam's got great field position. So now we'll have the North Putnam offense coming back out for the first time on this field under sophomore quarterback Christian Kramer, who has been a heck of a ball player for this Cougar squad in his short time here at the helm of this offense. Yeah, he's definitely a run pass threat here, so you have to be be awake on every down. First play from scrimmage, flag on the play as they shuffle it ahead, this time to Wes Murphy, but we'll check the flag here. It was immediately thrown right when the little shuffle to Murphy happened. I wonder if somebody moved up on the on the blue team there and the home team. That was a nice little play design. They faked the jet sweep and had a little shovel pass going back the other way for a little misdirection. Uh, that was a nice play design. Unfortunately, uh, it's going to go for naught here with the uh, illegal procedure penalty. So the illegal procedure going to back them up five yards here on this opening play of their drive. You know, North Putnam is very creative. We're going to see a lot of different formational looks, motions, shovel passes, um, anything you can think of. I think they've got it in their offense. There you had a look at Christian Kramer. He's alone in the backfield. Kramer. Looking to the outside, the pass is swatted by the defensive line there of South Putnam. Looked like that was Kyle Glasson in on that with a little bit of help as well from Keenan Mowry Shields. Yeah, Brandon Glaze uh, got out into the flat there in that little shoot route, and if that ball wouldn't have gotten knocked down, uh, Brandon had a lot of room to run there. Back to the line quickly, though, come the Cougars, and they try to punch it ahead with Murphy. And he keeps his legs moving before he's tackled to the outside for maybe a gain of a yard. Yeah, it's a little quick inside uh, inside zone play. Uh, South Putnam defense stepped up, and uh, so now we've got uh, third and again, third and a long ways here for North Putnam. Third down and 12. Kramer, off play action. Looks to the outside, fires downfield, has his receiver across the 40. He's still going to be well short of a first down. That's Brogan Woodall on the reception. Yeah, again, another little misdirection. Uh, tried to get the uh, South Putnam defense. I think he might be moving a little bit to the right. He rolled out to the left, was able to find an open receiver. Uh, you got to go for it here in a county game. We're not going to be kicking field goals from this, uh, the, from this spot. We're going to go for it on fourth down. So it is... Four down territory here for Kramer. And the snap is low. He picks it up, still has some time, fires to the outside, and it's nearly picked off by the defense of South Putnam. Connor Arnold nearly went off that one, went off for six on that one. Uh, Connor, Al Connor Allard almost had an opportunity to get a, the first uh, really big play of the night. Unfortunately, a bad snap. Uh, force that miscue. Uh, but watching so far, we've seen, I don't know, five, six, seven different formational looks from uh, from North Putnam here. They're really trying to confuse the South Putnam defense by giving them all the different looks, uh, but you got to execute the snap. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Endeavor Communications, which would like to say welcome to the high school football season. We are proud to be a part of your event and wish all the athletes good luck during this competition. Together, our members at Endeavor Communications are committed to helping our local community thrive. More information about the communities we serve and services we offer by visiting weendeavor.com. 
Putnam.com. And during that first play of this drive here, Coach, another flag here on South Putnam. It's been a little bit sloppy. You know, sometimes in a rivalry game like this, the emotions are running high, and uh, you get these you know, little mistakes here. I'm sure both teams will settle down as we get into this game. It looks like we didn't have a penalty. So there was a flag. It looks like they haven't walked off the penalty yardage here, so it's still going to be second down and 10. Unless North Putnam must have declined the penalty. They must have the declined penalty. the penalty. Mullen goes to the air, and his receiver drops it right into the hands of Drew Hill, the senior, and it falls incomplete. Yeah, North Putnam on their little 3 3 stack defense are trying to confuse the blocking schemes up front of the South Putnam offensive line. Uh, that time there was a uh, defender came scot free, didn't get picked up. I think maybe forced a little quick throw right there, and we had the bobble on the outside. So South Putnam now 0 for 3. The bobbled snap this time again. Mullen has to scramble a bit against the rush. Has Hill again this time, though but fails to get back to the original line of scrimmage. That is going to be a loss of five yards. Yeah, as Lovitz, we said, uh, alluded to earlier with the penalties, but uh, some sloppy play here. Both teams now with uh, bad snaps that take taking them out of some promising uh, opportunities for a drive here in North Put or South Putnam's going to have to punt the ball back again. So a slow start offensively for both of these teams, which are primarily offensive oriented, I would say, here through these first two games of the season. So the punt here from Kendall, this time is going to take an eagle bounce down inside the 30, and it's going to be taken back here by Brogan Woodall. He sheds a tackler, flag on, flag on the play, though, and then the shoestring tackle right at the 50-yard line there for South Putnam by Damon Cox, but we'll check the penalty. Yeah, I, didn't call block in, I guess block in the back. I thought it might have been a blind side, but it looked like he's going to call block in the back. So if the penalty is, in fact, against North Putnam, that will negate a pretty good return there by Woodall as we await the official uh, ruling from the, uh, from the referees. It's actually a personal foul. And it might be a hit above the, hit above the shoulder. I'm not exactly sure what that signal was. Either way, it's going to be a personal foul in 15 yards on North Putnam. I think they called a legal blindside block right there is what I what I believe the call was. You know, and you can't, you, when, a, when a defender is, is uh, uh, I don't want to say defenseless, but can't see the, the, the offense player, the blocker coming and then gets hit, even though it wasn't a big hit, that's still an illegal blindside block. So that's why we had the personal foul in the 15 marked off. So it would have been a return back to midfield. Now it backs North Putnam all the way back to their own 20-yard line. So they have a lot of real estate to cover here on their second drive of the night. So again, back with Kramer, who was responsible for a majority of the all-purpose yards a season ago here for North Putt. This time they shuffle it again to Murphy, and this time he has a little bit of running room up the middle and a solid gain of about six yards. Yeah, that was the play earlier that they had, uh, the first play of the game where they had the yardage on that, but they had the penalty going to the right. This time a little misdirection shovel to the left and gets them almost a first down. Up-tempo offense here already for the Cougars. Murphy on the give again, and he goes nowhere. He is stuffed right in the backfield there by Aiden Beatles who was the All-State selection a season ago as a junior out of the backfield for a loss there for South Putt. Yeah, Beatles got great penetration, and that little counter play was able to blow it up in the backfield. So maybe a loss of a yard on the play. Third down and a long four here for the Cougars. Kramer under center. Sweeping around, it gives it to his fullback. Ball is on the ground. And what do we have here? Looks like it's going to be picked up by South Putnam. A fumble recovery there. Looks like falling on it was Colby Harcourt out of the strong safety spot there on the tackle. I don't know if Brandon Glaze, if the, if the uh, handoff was clean or not. It looked like Glaze didn't quite have it uh, you know, up tucked away up under his uh, armpit. And unfortunately, the hit. Uh, caused the ball to go to the ground. South Putnam gets the first big turnover of the game. So the first turnover of the game now sets up South Putnam in excellent field position here. Great defensive play up the gut that time. There by North Putnam. Looked like that may have been Jaden Laffin on the tackle. 
Yeah, that was uh, Keenan Maori Shields all got the penetration, got the first hit, didn't quite allow his buddies to uh, clean it up. You know, definitely, uh, so, uh, I'm sorry, North Putnam wants to bring some, uh, wants to bring some heat here. Second down and long. South Putnam has had a hard time getting their offense going. Maybe they get it through the air this time as they hit Schweitzer. And Schweitzer gets swarmed, gets the ball ripped out of his hands as they're going out of bounds. North Putnam says that they have it, but we'll see what the officials decide to say here. It looked like play may have been stopped as he was falling to the ground. They're going to say it is South, Put South Putnam football. Yeah, Schweitzer did a nice job getting some yards after uh, contact right there. Uh, Kawhi almost fumbled the ball back over to him, but I think the ball went out of bounds before North Putnam recovered it. A gain of 13 yards, third down and one. Neither team has gotten a first down here in this ball game so far. Here's Mullen, tries to go on the keeper, turns the corner, gets the first down across the 15-yard line and is tackled right at about the 14. Yeah, Mullen did a really nice uh, job there. It's a little hesitation there, slowed the North Putnam defenders down, and then he was able to... Uh, accelerate up, get around the end, and get the first down. That was a nice individual play by Wyatt Mullen. About a five-yard scamper there for Mullen. And the Eagles trying to cash in on the fumble recovery by the Cougars. Handoff this time goes to Harcourt. And he doesn't get a whole lot of running room there, maybe a gain of a couple. Yeah, great edge uh, defense there by North Putnam. Uh, South Putnam came with the power play, uh, tried to kick out with the H-back, uh, bring the backside guard around, but uh, the North Putnam defense was there. Uh, looked like three or four players there able to make a tackle. So the South Putnam Eagles coming into this ball game as a pretty young team. They only have two seniors starting on the offensive unit this year. Here's Mullen. Going to the air, firing towards the end zone. One-handed grab, almost hauled in. It's incomplete. Looking for Wyatt Schweitzer. Yeah, it's really nice play design uh, right there by South Putnam. They had uh, Harcourt up in the flat, and then they ran the corner route, uh, corner route into Schweitzer. Fortunately, the throw was just a little bit behind him. If you watch it right here, if the ball gets to the corner, it's probably a touchdown, but he threw it behind him, and it's incomplete. So still third down here. And it appears that South Putnam can get the first down here without scoring, and we're going to have a timeout called here by North Putnam. Yeah, I'm not so sure South Putnam was ready for the empty backfield right there. Didn't like their defensive call and decided to uh, get a timeout here. We'll take a timeout here. 5.44 left to go here in the first quarter. Back in a moment here on the ISC Sports Network. Want lightning-fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa. From last to fast, and wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town. So you can download huge files in a flash, stream videos at blazing speeds, and game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. Still goose eggs on the scoreboard here as we are late in the first quarter here in northern Putnam County. The South Putnam Eagles threatening to score here on their county rival, the North Putnam Cougars. Alongside to Coach Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Coach, the Eagles with a big opportunity here. Right, and they're, uh, they went back with their empty set to cause North Putnam to cause a timeout, so we'll see what the defensive counter is right here. Man in motion. And it's going to be Mullen on the keeper, and he's just going to fall forward for maybe another gain of a couple yards. And this will bring up fourth down and long. Now, this is interesting here because South Putnam, they have a decent kicker in Wyatt Kendall. He is 14 for 14 on PATs. He has only attempted one field goal all season long, and he made it from 28 yards out. He's going to be going from right around that same distance right here. Yeah, I think it's important for South Putnam to come away with some points here, especially as it's fourth and nine right here. Uh, they've got to try and attempt a field goal and get, get something on the board here. So here is Wyatt Kendall, the left-handed kicker. Bobbled snap. Kendall's going to have to run with it, and he falls flat, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. Yeah, well, another bobbled snap here uh, for uh, South Putnam. Killed this drive and uh, gives North Putnam the ball back on downs. So, you know, for uh, a, a team that's given up a lot of points so far this year, uh, North Putnam is... Uh, Making some nice plays on defense and also getting a little help from uh, from the South Putnam Eagles. 
But once again, they flip the field, but are unable to cash in on the fumble recovery that they had from the Cougars' previous drive. And now if you're head coach Scott Moore for the Cougars, what are you telling your team to kind of avoid those, pen those, those miscues? Focus one play at a time. And Kramer on the hard count. Looks like he's going to draw South Putnam off sides. We'll check the penalty here. It's actually going to be a false start here against the Cougars. So penalties already racking up for both sides here. I have three for North Putnam and two for South Putnam. Yeah, I think that was uh, Brogan Woodall, the uh, wide receiver. I uh, was one who jumped on, uh, on that for North Putnam. Inside of five minutes to go here in quarter number one. And now we have another whistle on the sideline. Not sure exactly what the stoppage is for here. This looks like must be an official's stoppage for something. So you can see now, you know, North Putnam's trying to go tempo, but now uh, they're also doing some check with me from the sideline. So they're taking a... Uh, Calling a dummy play, seeing what South Putnam lines up in, and then uh, they're checking plays uh, from the coaches on the sideline. First down and 15 from the Cougars' own 15. Kramer on the design keeper, has some blocking, gets to the outside, another flag on the play as he gets tackled out of bounds for maybe a gain of three. Yeah, I think we had a holding call out there on the edge. I couldn't quite see what the number was. You know, just a little quarterback outside zone run there with the lead block, and it was a good positive run play, uh, but somebody didn't keep their hands up inside and get a holding call, I think, on North Putnam. So as we await the ruling from the officials here, it looks like it'll going, it's going to be against North Putnam. Indeed, that is the call. So that is the fourth penalty now on North Putnam here in the first quarter. Yeah, South Putnam declined it, though. They're going to take the down, I think, because of uh, make it third and third and long, I believe. Well, the down will be second and 15. Down. That was on first down, so that still puts it down in the books, and we play on. Another bobbled snap, and Kramer's going to have to fall on it right on top of his own goal line, and that is going from bad to worse here for North Putnam. Yeah, that's, uh, you've got to be able to execute the center quarterback snap, and unfortunately, uh, they're just not getting that done here right now. Uh, Gavin Payne with that nose tackle from uh, Preston Peffery from uh, South Putnam right in his face, just not getting that snap back there. Quick thinking, though, by Kramer to at least avoid the safety, but now they have to get out of their own end zone, and they're going to struggle to do that. And it looks like Murphy got right back to the line of scrimmage, and it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, just barely back to the line of scrimmage. So it is fourth down and a mile. And now Christian Kramer is going to have to punt from his own end zone. Kramer has had eight punts so far this year. His longest is 40 yards. He gets his boot into it the best he can, but that's going to take a... Eagle bounce right inside the 30-yard line. So once again, the Eagles with great field position. Now they have to really try and cash in on the miscues from North Putt. Yeah, again, they just have to get their focus down, eliminate the penalties, the bad snaps, and just execute their offense as they have uh, for the two weeks prior to this uh, to this ball game. So South Putnam, again, a 1A school out of the southern part of the county, as their name suggests. Talking with Coach Sorrell earlier this season, he says that he's a 1A school that really wants to try and specialize in one-way players. You don't see a lot of that for a 1A team as we get a flag again. Yeah, I think North Putnam jumped here. But that's uh, that's that's an, an interesting you know perspective when you don't have the great numbers like some of the bigger schools have, but yet you're able to uh, try and one platoon as much as you possibly can. Definitely some advantages uh, to that uh, that we can probably discuss here if we get a, a break in play. First down and five, looking towards the end zone. Fires downfield, caught for a touchdown. I think it was dropped. And it's incomplete. Look down at my spotting chart a little too soon right there as they look for Branson Enser. Yeah, they had uh, had the post route uh, had post route going, and unfortunately, we just didn't quite finish the play. Great protection, excellent throw, 
Hands White. are up there, just didn't finish. That's the second time that they have had at least a little bit of an opening on the passing plays into the end zone. Here's Mullen again, rolling to his left. This time again, looking to the pylon. This time it is caught. Did he get his feet in bounds? It looks like he did. That is why it's Schweitzer again with the grab. Yeah, really nice route by Schweitzer. A little out route or corner route uh, adjusted to the opening in the coverage. Was able to make the catch, keep his feet down. And that's a big first down there for South Putnam. 23-yard grab right there to bring up first and goal here for the Eagles. I formation here behind Mullen, giving it to Harcourt. And great penetration by that North Putt defense to make it no gain. Yeah, South Putnam ran the, the power play, uh, one of their favorite uh, run plays out of that two back look. And uh, North Putnam again gets great penetration, is able to hold it to maybe about a yard gain. Inside of three minutes. Harcourt again, punches it up the middle. This time he's into the end zone for an Eagle touchdown. Nice little isolation play, lead the fullback straight up, try and clean up on uh, the first middle linebacker that he can see and get the ball in the end zone. So this time South Putnam is able to cash in on the, on the uh, bad snap and the great field position. Nice little stutter step uh, right there by Harcourt uh, to get the ball in the end zone. So only a handful of plays from the 30-yard line, and the Eagles cash in on the good field position. So Kendall here for the PAT. Snap is good this time, and he puts it through the uprights to make it a 7-0 ball game. Back in a moment here in North Putnam, here on the ISC Sports Network. Uh, again? Tortured by technology, have no fear. Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer-free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi-Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact Endeavor and supercharge your internet today. So far tonight, 31 yards passing through the air for Wyatt Mullen, which sets up a three-yard run by Colby Harcourt to make it a 7-0 ball game in favor of South Putnam. Alongside Coach Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Now, if you're North Putt coach, you've really got to try and get back at him to keep the momentum from swinging further more towards South Putnam. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's got to be focused on executing just the fundamentals of your position, executing the snap count. Uh, those things are so very, very important here, and you know North Putnam's got to really get that together now in this drive uh, so that uh, they get some of the momentum back. So Kendall doing a onside kick here. It's going to be recovered by North Putnam, though. That's a bold strategy right there, Coach. Well, that's just being aggressive. I think that, that tells you what the uh, South Putnam coaching staff feels about their team, that they're able, one, to make a stop if they have to in that situation, but they're going to be aggressive and work to uh, see if they can recover an onside kick here and really take the momentum away. So, again, great play by uh, the North Putnam kick return team to get on that ball because uh, that could have been a disaster for North Putnam to, uh, to give South Putnam the ball back again. Certainly would not have been the start that Coach Scott Moore would like to see from his North Putnam Cougars. So ball at the 48 here, first down for the Cougars. Kramer going to go on play action, and he gets absolutely drilled by that defensive front line there, including Keegan, Keenan Mowry Shields there for South Putt. Yeah, running a little, uh, you can see counter play, tackle or guard uh, tight end pull right here. And again, that penetration by those white jerseys just uh, takes that uh, run play away, negative yardage play. He also had Ben Typen in on that one as well. 
So a loss of maybe a half a yard on the play there. And this time we have a timeout going to be taken here by South Putnam. Their first timeout of the ball game. Yeah, must not have liked the, the call they had on that offensive uh, formation from North Putnam. Uh, North Putnam's done a great job in mixing up their, their looks formation-wise. And, you know, defensive coaches and are very formation. Their, their calls are very much based on formation, and I don't think they like their call they had. That's why they went to a timeout. So again, talking more about the history of this rivalry. The last time these two teams met was back on September 2nd of 2022. It was a 52-20 win for South Putnam. That is after North Putnam had won five straight against the Eagles. But now North Putnam has not beaten South Putnam since their last meeting in 2019. They did not meet in 2021. And now this has really developed in a, into not only just a county rivalry, but also this is conference play here in the West Western Indiana Conference. Yeah, and already South Putnam already has a conference win. Uh, so uh, obviously North Putnam wants to get one tonight if possible. Both of these teams playing in the green division of the Western Indiana Conference, which is one of the few conferences in Indiana that does a conference championship game at the end of the regular season. Here's Kramer back to throw. He rolls out, fires along the sideline. Good defense and coverage there in the backfield there by Wyatt Schweitzer. Yeah, South Putnam was not going to be bashful there. North Putnam went to an empty set, five wide receivers, and uh, North Putnam went straight man, cover zero, uh, brought six rushers, and were able to get the pressure to force the, the throw away. And then, of course, good coverage you know, downfield as well. Kramer now one of three passing for 11 yards tonight. He tries again to go to the air. Throws on the run, and he's short trying to find Murphy. Yeah, it's a little misdirection boot play as he came out uh, to his left trying to make the throw, but again, pressure off the backside uh, caused uh, an errant throw, another incomplete pass. We also have another flag on the play. It's going to be a holding call. So on top of the incomplete pass, North Putnam going to be losing some yardage here, it seems. That is now six penalties on North Putnam, and South Putnam is going to decline the penalty to make it bring up fourth down. Yeah, take the down and force uh, North Putnam to punt the football back. Of course, you know, they always line up uh, in a, uh, an offensive formation here with uh, Kramer back there, so you never know. Are they going to punt it or are they going to kick it? But I think right here uh, where Kramer's depth is, I think this is a punt. Kramer is the regular punter so far this year, and he gets an end-over-end -end kick to take a Cougar bounce down to the 20 yard line. So now the Eagles gonna have to work some real estate this time after starting their previous two drives with an average starting spot of the Cougars 30 yard line. Yeah, the Eagles haven't been able to uh, get their offense uh, um, moving here when they've had the long field. Obviously they get the touchdown with a, a 30 yard field to go. So we'll see if they can get their offense a little bit more in sync and drive the length of the field here. South Putnam coming off of wins against Cloverdale and Owen Valley, in which they have been averaging 57 points per game through those two games. Mullen, designed pass outside. It's going to be Dorsett this time, and he tries to meander his way up the sideline for a solid gain of about seven yards. Yeah, just ran the little uh, bubble screen there to number three receiver. Uh, Brody Kincaid did a nice job uh, getting uh, from his outside linebacker spot, getting up there to make the tackle. Storsett's third catch of the season. He had two for 81 yards, one of which was a big bomb in their opening game against Cloverdale for a touchdown. Yeah, Kincaid did a nice job. White Switzer's trying to get the block on him, but he couldn't get it. Kincaid did a nice job, but it's still a nice game, though, on first down. So it'll be second down and three here for the Eagle offense. South Putnam doing a little check with me at the line of scrimmage too now. And now we have a whistle, and it looks like another timeout's going to be spent here by South Putnam. That's two in the first quarter. Yeah, they're having trouble. They they lined up trying to get a had a dummy call uh, uh, ready to go. Uh, looked at the North Putnam defense, and then when they went to switch the plays, they just couldn't quite get everything communicated, and the clock was running down. So they had to burn another timeout. 
So that'll be one timeout remaining here for the remainder of the first half. And as a coach here, uh, Dale, you know, what's, what, how is it sometimes having to burn those timeouts knowing that you have to conserve one for when it really matters later on in the half? Yeah, I mean, it drives you crazy. You don't want to get a cheap penalty uh, when you're in a second and short situation. Uh, it's just one of those things that they're just going to have to deal with now. And so clock management could be key here for South Putnam, especially towards the end of the second half or second quarter. So a minute 27 left to go here in quarter number one. It's certainly been a little bit choppy, to say the least, for both of these squads offensively. Here's Mullen rolling out now to his right. Fires downfield, has his man caught by Wyatt Schweitzer. That is his third catch of the afternoon. Here yeah, again, a little sprint pass to the outside. Schweitzer running the corner out. He did a really nice job in um, finding the soft spot in the zone and uh, turning his route uh, from the true corner a little bit more to the sideline and then makes a really nice catch uh, to uh, get the first down. But I think it's coming back. So that was a 22-yard pass completion that is going to be negated here by a penalty Looks like they call an illegal man downfield, I believe. And something like that can certainly be frustrating if you're a head coach. Yeah, well, of course, you know, the tough thing is if you get engaged as an offensive lineman and you're starting to block somebody, you really don't know where you are on the field. And, you know, it's just one of those calls that uh, sometimes gets called, sometimes doesn't. Unfortunately for South Putnam, it got called in this situation. So instead of a good passing play, that's going to bring up second down and seven. Mullen and a reaching grab there by Branson Enser for his first catch of the night is only going to go for a couple yards maybe three yeah just a little hitch route uh, to the single receiver uh, Neil Bryan the uh, North Putnam corner was playing off but he does a nice job to come up and secure the tackle right here the throw was a little bit high but uh, good tackle by Neil Bryan there out in space third down here for South Putt and another flag on the play. This is turning into a lot of dirty laundry on the field here. This time it's going to be against North Putnam. Yeah, North Putnam, I think, was going to bring some pressure there. And uh, they're doing a good job. Um, Wyatt Mullen, the South Putnam quarterback, is doing a nice job with his, uh, with his cadence. And again, that's where that check with me is coming from, where he's making a dummy call right there. And then they're going to see uh, you know, what the North Putnam defense is going to do. And that time uh, they jump, so they get a free five yards. It's offsides on North Putnam, and that five yards is enough to give North Putnam, or South Putnam a first down. Inside of a minute to play here. Mullen with some time. Launches it, looking and caught there by Schweitzer. A big grab to make up for that play that came back just a little while ago, and that is a big gain for the Eagles. Yeah, that's just the vertical pattern. You've got two receivers on the outside going vertical. Third receiver crossing the field, getting to the other hash mark, and just a great throw. Great job, uh, great job by Schweitzer coming back to catch the ball over his back shoulder. Big first down. From 132 to the other 32. It's first down here for South Putnam. Mullen again with time, steps up in the pocket, rolls outside, has a man open downfield, caught for a touchdown. Wyatt Schweitzer with single coverage. Doubles it up here on North Putnam. Yeah, again, North Putnam brings uh, brings some pressure. A man comes free, but he's not quite able to uh, to get home. Wyatt Mullen's pretty calm there as he rolls out away from the pressure. You can see it right there, and it just does a nice job. And then uh, Schweitzer uh, just does a great job taking the football away uh, from the uh, North Putnam cornerback right there and getting the touchdown. That is Mullen's. Sixth touchdown pass of the season, 32 yards on the catch there by Switzer. And Wyatt Kendall here to try and tack on the extra point. Snap is good, as is the kick. That makes it a 14 to nothing ball game. And finally here, Coach, we're seeing the offense of South Punt really get into their groove. Yes, we are, and that's what they want to do in terms of uh, throwing the football. Uh, Wyatt Mullen doing a nice job being calm in the pocket, uh, being able to run away from some pressure. Uh, North Putnam's doing a good job with their blitz package and, and, and getting people free. They're just not getting home, and you can't let Mullen uh, just stand there and throw the ball down the field. One thing I have noticed here, Coach, is that 
South Putnam hasn't really been able to get any kind of ground game going. That's really, so they've really opened things up going through the air. Mullen, 72 yards passing on the night so far. Yeah, well, you know, they're getting outnumbered in the box by, uh, by North Putnam. Um, if you just look at it from a formational standpoint, so the run isn't really there unless they want to add the quarterback in on, on the quarterback zone or quarterback ISO type plays. Uh, so North Putnam's taking advantage. They've got numbers throwing the football, and they've been able to make some big plays throwing the ball. The shadows starting to engulf the field here at North Putnam High School as the sun starts to set a beautiful night in the mid-70s here. We couldn't ask for a more perfect summer night here for some football. I know that gets you enough to try an onside kick again. Just might. North Putnam certainly looks a lot more vigilant here on special teams. They recovered the last one, which was an onside kick attempt. Wes Murphy and Brogan Woodall back deep to return. If that is in fact where Kendall puts this football. This time they go downfield. Murphy from the 10. Has some blocking, but is immediately engulfed there and brought down at about the 24-yard line. And it looked like he might have had a seam if he would have bounced to his left and had some space to run, but good coverage by uh, all those white shirts getting down there. And again, uh, now South Putnam's got a long ways to go here. They've got to get their offense uh, cranked up. They've got to get some first downs and try and get some points on the board. Brody Burge on the tackle there, the freshman. Of course, I say freshman. There are a lot of young players on the South Putnam roster. As I mentioned before, only two starting seniors on offense, five starting seniors on defense as the handoff goes up the gut, this time giving it to Paxton O'Brien for the first time out of the backfield for North Putnam, and he goes for a couple yards. The Alden uh, Beatles does a nice job uh, getting off a block and making that tackle uh, for uh, just about a two, three-yard gain right here. So they give him three yards, and that'll bring us to the end of quarter number one. It's been all at South Putnam Eagles here through the first quarter. Second quarter coming at you at the other end of this timeout on the ISC Sports Network. Want lightning fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa. From last to fast. And wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town. So you can download huge files in a flash. Stream videos at blazing speeds and game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. Uh, again? Tortured by technology? Have no fear, Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. On to the second quarter here on the ISC Sports Network alongside Coach Dale Carlson. I'm Kurt Darling. Coach, we mentioned this here in the earlier in the first half about how South Putnam has really prioritized one-way platoon system players. Just to put it in perspective here as we get the first play of scrimmage here from the second quarter. It's to Paxton O'Brien again, and he falls forward for a gain of a yard. But put it in perspective, Coach, on defense for South Putnam, they only have four players that actually play offense. The rest specialize on the defensive side of the ball. Right, and, and I think that's why you see a lot of these young players making making big plays for South Putnam because they're getting a lot of experience. We've got a illegal procedure call in North Putnam. But you, know, you look at Schweitzer, who's a sophomore, who has undoubtedly been their big play receiver here tonight. I'm sure he's gotten that opportunity to play because they're committed to try to play, you know, one platoon football. And I think especially at the small school level, when you get to the depth part of it, uh, your players are going to be fresher, not only in the third and the fourth quarter tonight, but in games 9, 10, 11, and 12 as the season goes on. So back in the pistol here is Kramer for North Putnam trying to get something going here on offense. They have so far been neglectful to do so. Kramer goes through the air, almost picked off, and it is dropped there on by Caden Switzer, the 6'1 senior, the brother 
of Wyatt Switzer. Yeah, again, you see all the different formations and motions, just run a simple little boot pass, trying to hit that crossing route coming out, and Switzer has got really good coverage. That was a tough catch to make for an interception, but it was great coverage, nice pass breakup, and again, we're looking at uh, fourth down here for North Putnam. And North Putnam appears to be in another punting situation as Wyatt Switzer will be back to return this one. So Kramer with a high end over end kick. And it's going to be fair caught right at midfield there by Wyatt Switzer. You know, the good thing about having your quarterback back there as a punter is uh, you, you don't uh, give the uh, opponent an opportunity to really put any sort of a punt block on because you don't know if he's going to throw the football or have an offensive play. So you, you keep that kind of vanilla and keep the pressure off your punter. And talking with Coach Chuck Sorrell earlier this week for South Putnam on the platoon system discussion that we've been having, one thing that he actually did when he first came to South Putnam was basically tap into the basketball team to get more players and more athletes playing multi-different sports at South Putnam as we're going to have a false start penalty here on the Eagles. That'll back them up five yards. But one player in particular, Drew Hill, was specialty basketball for South Putnam, but he was able to convince the 6'1 senior to come play wide receiver for him. And why was he able to do that? Because he said, there's going to be a place for you to play. It's not going to be that we're going to have uh, eight guys going both ways. There's going to be an opportunity for you to play and, and make an impact for us, and that's happened. Mullen goes to the outside, has his receiver, as we just talked about, Drew Hill, and he gets across midfield. Back to the original line of scrimmage, a gain of five. Yeah, just a little uh, quick screen, wide receiver screen on the outside. Zach Dorsett uh, did a nice job getting a block out there so Drew Hill could pick up uh, seven or eight yards. Uh, and what we sometimes call the Randy and Larry screen. So Larry to the left, Randy to the right. Any particular origin for those names? Uh, it was a Hell Mummy Air Raid Mike Leach thing. That's where it came from. <laughs> left and right, Larry and Randy. There you go. Delayed handoff this time to Harcourt. He has a lot of running room this time. He's good for a first down and a little bit more as he gets tackled out of bounds right about the 36-yard line. A yeah, gain of 14. You know, that's uh, South Putnam's, uh, one of South Putnam's favorite plays is to run some sort of down, down, and then kick out in a pull. That time it was a guard tackle counter, not the power play, but it's in, in essence almost the same type of play. The little guy, ran. Colby Harcourt, standing all of 5'7 with a good run right there. Mullen going right to his far side receiver and is immediately hit and drops incomplete. Neil Bryan did a nice job coming up and uh, forcing that incompletion there with the uh, with the hit right in the back. Uh, you know, I tell you what, one of the best running backs I ever coached in college football was up at Trine University, Baron Chambers. He was all of uh, five, five and three quarters, 190 pounds, was a two-time All-American. So, uh, you know, you, size isn't always the, 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 the thing that we make it out to be. Uh, can a kid play football? And uh, Harcourt can play football. Sometimes that low center of gravity can be a big advantage. Second down and 10 here for the Eagles. Mullen with some time has his man. And that is a big catch there by Logan Sillery. And that'll be a short gain of a, maybe a couple yards. Yeah, just a little hitch route. Uh, but, you know, what, what uh, South Putnam has in their bag of tricks, though, is the double move, and I think they might be setting a double move up here potentially uh, for some time, uh, you know, maybe this drive or maybe a little bit later here in this quarter. We've only had a minute tick off of this second quarter. Third down and long. Mullen having to muddle through some receivers, caught in the flat there by Dorsett. And that is a big first down there by South Putnam and a big catch by Dorsett. Yeah, Zach Dorsett is the fullback, H-back, tight end type player. And again, just a little uh, fake, a uh, little uh, uh, sprint pass, and he catches uh, Dorsett coming across the field in that nice little opening in the zone and another first down. South Putnam's in business. 18 yards on the catch there by Dorsett. And off again to Harcourt. He sheds a tackler, keeps his little legs moving, and tries to plunge forward for a couple extra yards, a gain of four. Yeah, it's just a little, uh, basically, just a little tight zone play we call. It's going to either hit the play side guard, center gap, or it could bend all the way back outside. Uh, Harcourt tried to bring it back to the outside, but the uh, 
North Putnam Pursuit was able to uh, flag him down for no gain. They only give him two yards on the play, second down and eight. Here's Mullen with a lot of time, rolls out to his right. He's going to keep it himself and goes ahead to get the first down. Yeah, again, uh, North Putnam brings some pressure. They got uh, one player free, and uh, Mullen does a nice job uh, being calm in the pocket. Rolls out, sees his escape lane right there, and just uses his speed to get up the sideline, pick up a few yards, give himself a third and four situation here. So far this season, Mullen has had 12 carries coming into the night with 126 yards. He's also rushed for two touchdowns. Third down and a long three here for South Putt. Right down to the end of the play clock, evading the pressure. Dump off this time to Harcourt. He sheds a couple tackles before he falls forward to the 10-yard line. He's still going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Yeah, Caden Hankins was the first player there for North Putnam. He did a good job reading the, uh, the quick screen pass here. Uh, I think this was kind of a hot throw that if uh, if Mullen got pressure, he was going to dump it off to Harcourt right there. He had the free release, uh, but give uh, Caden Hawkins a, a, a uh, good job here. He should get a star in his helmet for uh, getting up and holding him short of the first down. And the Eagles are going to go for it here. Mullen rolling outside into the end zone, tipped up and falls incomplete. Both players making a good case to try and catch the ball. They're looking for Switzer, and it's a turnover on downs. Yeah, that's a big stop here for uh, for uh, North, uh, the North Putnam Cougars. Uh, if uh, South Putnam could have scored here and gone up, uh, gone up by three scores, it might have been a long night. North Putnam's got a chance now to get back in the uh, game here, see if they can uh, get something going offensively here and get some points on the board. Good night throwing the ball, though, for Wyatt Mullen. He has 99 yards through the air. But now if you're North Putt, as I've said a couple times before here, Coach, it's time to really get in gear on offense. Yeah, they've got to get something going here offensively. Um, you know, and I think, you know, maybe a quick throw out to the perimeter, just something to get some confidence, get a, get a first down, and, and hopefully get the sticks moving. And off this time is to O'Brien. Correction, that was actually Braden Glaze on the, the carry. There's just not a lot of running room in there. Uh, right now, North or South Putnam is is putting, you know, six and seven players right up in the box. Uh, again, that's a little power play uh, that North North Putnam tried to run right there, and just the penetration uh, was too much, and a negative play on first down. Kramer looking to pitch it, nobody home, and he has to fall on top of it, and it's going to be North Putnam ball here as. Again, just some miscues in the backfield, and they are in a familiar place again. North Putnam has already been in this situation on the other side of the field. Yeah, I mean, North Putnam tries to uh, uh, just get a quick pitch out there. Unfortunately, there was penetration up inside, uh, forced the air and pitch, and now you're way behind the sticks and almost in your own end zone. So it is going to be second down and a mile here. And now we're going to have a... Stoppage in play and a timeout going to be called by North Putnam. Yeah, I don't think North Putnam had the personnel they wanted in there, and they might have just had 12 on the field on that last play. I'm not quite sure, but uh, uh, unfortunately, there's uh, you know some miscommunication. It's difficult. You get yourself backed up. You're trying to change your personnel groups and can't quite get the communication on the sideline and get those players out in the field. So while we have a moment, tonight's game brought to you by Endeavor Communications, which would like to say welcome to the high school football season. We are proud to be a part of this local event and wish all of the athletes good luck during this competition. Together with our members, Endeavor Communications is committed to helping our local community thrive. For more information about the communities we serve and services we offer, visit us at weendeavor.com. There you see the, North, the South Putnam Eagles. They began playing football all the way back in 1971. They played, they got their first win of program history three years later during the 1974 season in which they went two and eight. But they have since gone on to win a state championship in 1A back in 1986 under head coach Mark Wildman. 
Cougars trying to get some success on offense here. They do the design run. It's Kramer going to the outside to give his team at least a little bit of breathing room as it'll be fourth down here to try and get at least somewhat of a manageable punt here if you're the Cougars. Yeah, Kramer will be back in uh, punt formation again. It's, uh, again, just uh, the miscues, the mistakes, fumbles, bad snaps, uh, just putting North Putnam in some really bad situations here. And uh, really, that's about all you can call in that situation is try and give yourself some room to get the punt out. Punt is away, but again, it is a straight up in the air kick and an easy catch right there for Wyatt Switzer. Again, excellent field position here for South Putnam. This is the third time, Coach, that they have started at least between the 30 and 40-yard line on the opposing team's side of the field. Yeah, they haven't had to go very far to put points on the board. Now, North Putnam's defense has come up a couple of times and made some nice stops, but you can't live like that and continue, continue to give your opponent the ball uh, on your 34-yard uh, uh, line. Uh, that's that's going to make it difficult to, to keep them out of the end zone. It has certainly made it easy for the Eagles to get close. They've been unable to cash in only once in this situation before, but they have scored the next two times. Here's Mullen with a lot of time firing over the middle into some tight coverage looking for Dorsett, and it's through the hands incomplete. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to go to that post route to the single receiver uh, that uh, was dropped uh, earlier in the game uh, by uh, uh, by Ensor, I think they're trying to go back to that type of throw again. You can see Ensor on the post route, uh, but it was well covered on the crossing route, and it's now you're second and ten. Middle of the second quarter. It's been all Eagles scoring-wise. Here's Mullen, dumps it out to Dorsett. And he tries to wheel it out for a solid gain of maybe three. Again, it was that uh, the bubble screen, uh, but uh, Murphy... Uh, was able, Murphy and Woodall were able to defeat their blocks and make a tackle there, actually tackle for loss. So now it's third and uh, third and eight right now uh, for loss of a, of a yard or so. Wyatt Mullen now over 100 yards passing on the night. With 10 seconds here on the play clock, Mullen gets the snap off. He dumps it off to his receiver, Hill. Hill tries to work his way through some traffic, and he gets back close to the 25-yard line, and he'll still be short of a first down. Yeah, that's the, uh, sometimes call that the smoke screen or the rocket screen where the wide receiver uh, comes from the outside straight down the line of scrimmage, trying to get all those white shirts, all those blockers in front, and... Uh, could have been a bigger play there. North Putnam does a nice job rallying to make the play and, and at least uh, uh, get them in a fourth down situation. It is fourth down and two. South Putnam is 0 for 2 on fourth down tonight. High snap is handled here by Harcourt. He is close to the first down before he is upended. He is right at the marker, and we may get a measurement here, Coach. Yeah, I know it's hard. You know, from our angle, it's hard to tell. I thought he was a little short, but... Uh, yeah, he was. He was short. They didn't. I thought so. Now they're going to eyeball it. That is a turnover on downs. And the coaching staff here for North Putnam amped up here, proud of their defense for keeping South Putnam out of, an, out of the end zone in a pretty precarious situation with that field position. Yeah, as Wes Murphy from his safety spot. That's a great fill by a safety and a running back. There was a big hole right there. And uh, Murphy came out of the secondary, uh, was able to make the tackle on a very good running back. And North Putnam gets another stop here uh, with the short field and has a chance again to get down the field, get a score, and get back in the game. So inside of seven minutes left to go here in the first half, and the Cougars need to put a drive together. And they may be able to do it this time here with Glade, uh, Braden Glaze, and he uh, pierces his way through that defensive front line of South Putt for a solid gain of seven. Yeah, ran a little counter play right there, uh, uh, tackle, uh, tight end pull, and we're able to uh, find a crease. Nine yards, officially the, the run there as they go right back to the ground again. He may have gotten a yard, and if that is the case, they're going to mark him maybe just shy, so it's going to be no gain on the play. Yeah, the official on the far side actually marked him as the first down, and near side official uh, brought it back. But that was that same counter play again. You can see the H back and the guard, uh, or the tackle pulling through there. And uh, and now they're going to short. 
Well, now they're moving the chains. They're going to say first down. Guess they're going with the official on the far side. That is the spot. That is the first first down of the ball game here for North Putt. Kramer again, another bobbled snap. That is the third time that that has happened tonight. And that is going to back them all the way up inside their own 15. Yeah, those are those momentum killers. You get uh, a couple of nice runs, get yourself your first first down of the night, and then the snap goes uh, uh, low and hard into the ground, and now you lose 15, 20 yards. 19 yards to be precise on that one. Those types of mistakes are just killers. Second down and long. Kramer gets it outside to Murphy. He turns the corner, tries to tight rope along the sideline before he is hammered out of bounds. And they're going to get an unnecessary roughness penalty here on Braden, on Aiden Beatles. Yeah, and that should give uh, North Putnam a first down here with the, with the unnecessary roughness call. So went to empty the backfield with the, uh, with the motion, just threw the little quick screen out. Actually a pretty good call. What are you going to do when you're in second and a mile? And let's just try and get some positive yards. Not only are they able to get some positive yards, but they also get a penalty tack down, which should give them a first down. That was after Mur Murphy had gotten about 10 yards on the pass and catch. So that's going to go from the spot of the foul and an automatic first down here for North Putnam. So the Cougars now have a little bit of life here on this drive here with five minutes to go in the second. Third down and one here. So not quite a first down on that penalty, but it looks like Kramer may have just gotten enough there on that little scamper. There's a little zone replay right there. Kramer was able to uh, get the edge, and it looks like he got the first. No, maybe no, not. Just not. He's about a half a yard shy. And North Putnam has no choice but to go for this. Fourth down and less than a yard. They might be running the play clock down here and call timeout. And that is exactly what they are going to do. That is North Putnam's third and final timeout. And we will take one with them. 14-0 South Putnam on top of the Cougars of North Putt. Back in a moment here on the ISC Sports Network. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer free streaming, gaming, sharing and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi-Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact Endeavor and supercharge your internet today. Want lightning fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa. From last to fast. And wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town. So you can download huge files in a flash. Stream videos at blazing speeds. And game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast. And contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. Right back to the action. Quarterback sneak here for Kramer on fourth down and one. And they finally get the first down. Yeah, great push by the uh, North Putnam offensive line there. And Kramer's able to find a little seam, get himself the first down. North Putnam's got a chance here. They've got a drive. Ball at the 46. Kramer now with a little bit of rhythm. He's going to keep it, tries to cut back into the middle. He's able to squeak out a few yards as he falls forward to the 50. Yeah, I'm not sure what he what they're reading there because that was that counter play and it looked like there was a nice seam. I don't know if uh, he just wasn't able to get the handoff there, but uh, Kramer's able to pick up a few yards here, get him a second and six situation. Again, running right into Aiden Beatles, who was the All-State linebacker for South Putnam a season ago. As Murphy turns the corner across down to the 45, close to a first down. Yeah, this time again is the counter play again, just out of a little different look instead of being in the pistol. Uh, they're able to give it to an offset back uh, on the uh, little oh, double handoff play right there. I missed that little double handoff on the counter play, and uh, they're close to first down. Third down and one, and again, another double handoff, the same exact play 
and Murphy is able to fall forward for a first down. You know, I saw, I thought I saw that play on video from uh, their game last week, and I couldn't see from the angle, but uh, that's a nice little concept they have with the double handoff on the counter. That involves Braden Glaze, the six foot junior. And now the officials asking for the clock to be stopped here. It's a timeout going to be taken by South Putnam, and that is their third and final timeout of the half. Yeah, I think uh, it seems like Coach over there wants to try and get his defense together. They've. Uh, you know, had a big penalty that allowed uh, North Putnam to uh, finally get a first down, and now uh, a couple of run plays have seen their defense. North Putnam's got some momentum, and I think he's trying to slow them down a little bit, get his defense uh, together. You can see uh, they're, get, they're getting it right now on the sideline. So the North Putnam offense this season, as we mentioned earlier on, they're averaging about 25 points per game through the first two games. But one team, that one person, one aspect that they've certainly had to try and make up for this season is the absence of Noah Claycomb, who was the graduated senior from a year ago. He led the team in all-purpose yards, clo yards, close to 3,000 all-purpose yards just a season ago. Those are some massive shoes to fill for this offense. Yeah, it's tough when you have to replace all that offense. Uh, I know they're trying, but uh, uh, they still got some work to go here. Kramer. Going to heave it long, a wobbly fire downfield. Caught wide open. That time, Brogan Woodall walks into the end zone. Touchdown, North Putnam. All right, North Putnam this time struck with the double move. They uh, emptied the backfield out with the running back, faked a little screen. You can see the little block out there. Uh, fake on the block on the outside, and then right down the field for the touchdown. And uh, they get themselves right back in the game. Brogan Woodall does a nice job faking the block on the, the uh, little running back screen. Goes right by, gets the touchdown. 42-yard pass and catch puts the Cougars right back into this ball game. North Putnam had one of these uh, or had one of those earlier in the season uh, for, for a touchdown throw. So uh, you would think South Putnam would have been thinking a little bit about uh, the screen and the double move on the outside. And now we're going to have an offside penalty here on the PAT, this time on South Putnam. And so that'll move them maybe all of about maybe a foot closer to the goalpost here on this point after touchdown with Evan Polly going to be taking the kick here. He's one for one on PATs this season, but he was 29 of 31 a season ago. Low snap, and it's going to be blocked and no good there by South Putnam. So that still keeps it at least a little bit less manageable there for North Putnam. But nevertheless, Coach, that six points is big there for the Cougars based on how this game was going. Yeah, that's that's huge. And again, um, you know, I, I think the uh, uh, ability to, uh, you know, to get another stop down on fourth down, get the football back, and then able to go the length of the field, overcame a bad snap. Uh, South Putnam made a mistake with the hit out of bounds, and then they were able to get the big play on the double move on the fake screen and go on the outside. And Chuck Sorrell, the head coach of the South Putnam Eagles in his fifth year, 34 and 13 in his time at the helm of South Putt. He is 38 and 39 out of his eighth year. He won a state championship at Tri-West High School, just a little bit east of here. Uh, and you know what? Yeah, I mean, South Putnam's got a, a very good football program. It's just a shame that uh, they've got Lutheran in their uh, uh, in their uh, in their district. But uh, you know, you got to find a way if you're going to win win that type of games. You got to beat the champ, right? So maybe this might be South Putnam's year. South Putnam won eight games a year ago and had a heck of a season, coming up short for the Western Indiana Conference Championship, but. Like you said, Coach, they ran right into that juggernaut in Lutheran in their very first game of their sectional. Yeah, that's rough when you, you're 8-2 eight and, eight and two and you get to play Lutheran. Lutheran would go on to win the 1A state championship. Lutheran now playing in Class 2A. Here is a good return this time by South Putnam. Nearly fumbled, and it is fumbled. It's going to be recovered by North Putnam. On the return, Caden Switzer coughs it up for South Putnam. And the Cougars in business again here with less than four minutes to go here in the second. Well, you know, 0-2, 2-0, it doesn't matter when you get these rivalries together. And we talked at the beginning of the game about turnovers. And this is a huge, huge turnover right and here. Hold the South phone Putnam. here, Coach. It looks like they're going to say Switzer was down. They signaled it for South Putnam. Uh, 
that is uh, too bad you don't have replay in high school football because that, that ball's out. That looks like it is out before he is down, Absolutely. Coach. Absolutely, that ball is out. That's so, a shame. A little bit of a break here for South Putnam after what could have been a fumble. Should we buzz down to the officials and tell them to take a look at the replay? <laughs> <laughs> on the 48, South Putnam on offense here. Here's Harcourt, tries to turn the corner and he's able to outrun the chasing Caden Hankins and he gets a gain of two. Yeah, but again, uh, even though uh, he was able to outrun and get two yards there, he had to run a long ways to uh, to get that uh, to get that two yards. Great job by the uh, North Putnam defense to get up and, and hold him to two. Caden Hankins was on the pursuit right there. He started eight games as a freshman last year, now a sophomore linebacker. Mullen, quick toss to Dorsett in traffic. Gets close to a first down, and they're going to give it to him. That's a very, very nice throw. Dorsett does a nice job setting down right in between the two defenders, and uh, White Mullen puts the ball right on his numbers, right where it had to be, and gets the first down. Clock continues to roll here. Plus territory. Ball is tipped there on the pass. And it falls incomplete. That's Jesse Bryan getting the hand on it. Yeah, Jesse Bryan does a nice job. But he realizes he can't uh, defeat that block right there, so he gets his hands up on the quick throw, knocks it down. That's exactly what you teach your defensive lineman to do. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up when he goes to throw it. Jesse Bryan, the five foot eleven senior here, the defensive end for the Cougars, getting into the backfield. Mullen fires quickly over to Hill. And he's going to fall forward close to a first down right about the 32-yard line. That's what we call the snag concept. Hill from his wide receiver spot comes inside in a little spot route about five or six yards deep, tries to settle in the zone with uh, Switzer going uh, deep to the corner route. And uh, nice throw and catch again uh, by the quarterback Mullen and the wide receiver Hill. And that is good for a first down. So South Putnam with some limited time left on the clock are able to move the football. And so we have the officials conferencing here at, at about the 32 yard line here. Looks like they may be rethinking this. It's going to stay third down it appears. Yeah, I think uh, we're getting, getting a little bit con confused here by the, the two sideline officials on spots and where, where the ball is and moving the down markers. So the clock rolls here as it is third down and one. Hand off to Harcourt, follows his blockers. He's gonna cut it to the outside and it looks like he's still gonna be short of a first down here, coach. Yeah, they ran the, uh, ran the counter play and it was a nice job by, uh, again, uh, Colby Harcourt, the safety, uh, is able to uh, scrape out to the outside and uh, uh, make a tackle on uh, on Harker. I'm sorry, I got that wrong number, wrong wrong team there. But it's a nice tackle, and uh, we got fourth down now. South Putnam is 0 for 3 on fourth down tonight. They go to the outside. Hill has the catch, gets the first down, and is tackled out of bounds just across the 20. Boy, you just hate to see uh, your corner playing that far off on fourth and uh, fourth and short. Uh, and they just take the little hitch throw out to the outside. They're able to pick up, uh, you know, seven, eight yards on a hitch throw for a first down. Grand total of 13 yards gained there on the play. Gets it inside to the 20-yard line. Mullen, high snap. Off a of play action. He gets touched from behind, but still is able to avoid the pressure and he is able to push his way forward a gain of five. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good result off a mistake there. That high snap there, just trying to run the counter play to uh, to uh, Hartcourt again, and uh, the snap was a little high. They couldn't make the exchange, and Mullen was uh, able to uh, get some positive yards going up around the end. South Putnam able to move the football here late in the quarter while also draining the clock. This drive started with what most likely should have been a fumble recovered by North Putnam, but the officials called the returner down, and now South Putnam has been able to cash in on a big favor they were thrown. Here's Mullen looking towards 
the middle, and that is off of the hands of Hill, and he drops it as he looked right at the end zone as he was catching that ball. Yeah, that's that little snag concept again with a little spot route by the outside receiver, Hill, and you can see he's looking at all the open space thinking, I'm going to score a touchdown right here. Got to catch the ball first before you go and, and run with it. Uh, that was wide open. That, that could have been six points. That's a break for North Putnam. With how much they've passed the ball tonight, Coach, Wyatt Mullen has been efficient. He's only dropped seven passes. Here's Mullen going to the outside. Caught by his receiver. That's Switzer diving towards the end zone. And he is going to be down right at about the one-yard line. A heck of an effort there, though, by the sophomore receiver. Yeah, Switzer does a really nice job uh, after the catch trying to get uh, positive yards, just pumping those legs, pumping those legs, pumping those legs. You can see the little out route right there. And uh, he just drives right through the uh, tackle of uh, Christian Kramer. And that's that two-way player thing coming back. Hardcore going for touchdown number two, and he does. He's into the end zone, and South Putnam able to double it up again. But now we have a late flag after the play. The touchdown stands. Yeah, again, just a little off-tackle run play there. Just get Hardcore the, the football going straight ahead. Uh, trying to get a score here. Let's have to check, see what the penalty is. I didn't see anything, but there's a lot of bodies in that scrum there. So it's after the play. And it's going to be a personal foul here against South Putnam. And so we're going to have a little bit of a look here at that here in just a matter of moments as we tick inside of a minute left to go here in quarter number two. So there's the official signal, a personal foul. It's going to be accepted here by North Putnam. Let's take a look at this here at the touchdown, Coach. Yeah, just a little simple isolation play right there. Uh, could have had a tackle in the, for a loss in the backfield, but uh, Harcourt, uh, Harcourt's able to keep his legs pumping and get in the end zone. And then after the play, as we take a look here, no, I see it right there. And yeah, right there, yep. Trying to finish the play. You know, that's one of those. And that's it. He's just getting on top yeah, of him right there. That's him. Zach Dorsett getting a little bit too extracurricular there after the play. Yeah, it's a nice block by Dorsett. He didn't need to uh, uh, show him up there when he was already on the ground. Just needed to walk away. So Colby Harcourt gets his second touchdown run of the night. And Kendall puts it through the uprights here with less than a minute to go. We'll take another timeout back here in just a little bit here on the ISC Sports Network. Uh, again? Tortured by technology? Have no fear. Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer-free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi-Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact Endeavor and supercharge your internet today. Less than a minute to go here in the first half in Northern Putnam County. Here at North Putnam High School alongside Coach Dale Carlson. I'm Kurt Darling at South Putnam Coach. They've been able to keep it at a distance over the Cougars right now. Yeah, so far so far they have now. You know, South Putnam had opportunities. They could have potentially been up more. North Putnam defense has come through. Not a lot of time here for uh, South Putnam, 54-2 uh, to go. Uh, but we'll see what they can do if they can get some field position here. Maybe they can get a chance to get some more points on the board. Wyatt Kendall will send this one towards Wes Murphy and Brogan Woodall, who are back to return. And it'll be Murphy. He comes towards the near side of the sideline. And he's going to get 
eventually taken down at about the 35 yard line. You know, but again, you look at South Putnam, that uh, the player didn't quite make the tackle there, but he forced it to allow his buddies to come up was Blake Witt, number one. He's a freshman playing varsity football, running down the field, almost had a big tackle on a kickoff. But I think it's, it's playing all those players. They get all this experience, and then when they're juniors and seniors, that's why you see this South Putnam team winning eight games, nine games a year. On that note, Coach, as we've talked about with this platoon system, you mentioned it while we were off air. Christian Kramer had the tackle to keep at least a score out for the moment on that previous drive but you see a lot of two-way players for this North Putnam team and they're already looking a little winded yeah you get a little bit fatigued here in these clutch situations here's Wes Murphy on that double handoff again this time up the middle has a lot of running room across midfield down to the 45 yeah that's a nice nice play in that little double handoff counter uh, South Putnam's gonna have to figure figure something out here and I've got North Putnam going up tempo that's a 19 yard run by Murphy Pitch this time, it's going to be a halfback pass downfield and it falls incomplete as Brogan Woodall tried to send it down to try and get it into the hands of Neil Bryan, the receiver, and yeah. it's well short. Yeah, and that was really good, uh, that was good coverage there by Wyatt Switzer. Again, this is the last one run by Murphy that went for north, about, about 20 yards. But the good thing is the clock gets stopped here and, and now we get a, a personal foul penalty against South Putnam. And so that's some extra yards and an automatic first down this time for North Putnam. So some penalties late here by South Putnam has really been able to keep the Cougars in this one, along with some help from them themselves. Of course, they had a 42-yard touchdown pass from Kramer to Brogan Woodall on their previous drive. Yeah, I don't think Coach Soil is going to be very happy with that. Somebody's going to get an earful at halftime for making that type of mistake here at the end of the half. Kramer again looking downfield, has a lot of time to throw. He checks down, nearly picked off, and it's dropped to the ground that time. Caden Switzer on the coverage. Yeah, Switzer does a nice job reading the eyes of, uh, of uh, Christian Kramer right here. Uh, sees that he's uh, looking, staring that receiver down, does a nice job, great break. He was probably eight yards behind the receiver right there and just gets a hand on it. If he doesn't touch that ball, that's going to be a potential touchdown for North Putnam. 23 ticks left on the clock here in the first half. Kramer, low snap, picks it up, comes to the right side. Hauls it over the middle, nearly picked off, falls incomplete. Again, it is Switzer on the coverage. You know, again, even though uh, Kramer uh, was able to pick that low snap up, that just messes with your timing just a little bit and unfortunately allowed uh, South Putnam to get into coverage right there, able to knock that ball down and uh, looking at third and 10 here for North Putnam. So the officials making sure the clock is right here as the ball sits at the 31-yard line. Third down and 10 here for the Cougars. Got to hurry here. We got four seconds on the play clock. They just get the snap off. Kramer spins to his outside. He's going to fire it. Looking down the sideline, it is caught simultaneously. It's going to be intercepted by South Putnam. And once again on the coverage, this time it is Wyatt Mullen, who plays quarterback on the offensive unit for South Putnam, comes up with an interception to his counterpart. Yeah, we know Wyatt Mullen is a good athlete, and, and I'm thinking, you know, in situations like this where you know they're going to throw the football, uh, Coach Soil is getting his best players out there, and uh, he just makes a great, great play on the interception to snuff out the drive. That is already his fourth interception on the year, playing free safety for the defense of the Eagles. And so now with eight seconds left, it looks like South Putnam is going to take a knee and take this one to halftime. It's certainly been a competitive one, but South Putnam has just been that much better going into the halftime period. 21 to 6, the Eagles leading this county rivalry over the Cougars of North Putnam. We'll take a timeout. Halftime coming at you next right here on the ISC Sports Network. Want lightning fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa. From last to fast. And wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town. So you can download huge files in a flash. 
stream videos at blazing speeds, and game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. Uh, again? Tortured by technology? Have no fear, Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer-free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi-Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact Endeavor and supercharge your internet today. What lightning fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa. From last to fast. And wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town. So you can download huge files in a flash. Stream videos at blazing speeds and game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. Uh, again? Tortured by technology? Have no fear, Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer-free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi-Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact Endeavor and supercharge your internet today. It's halftime here in northern Putnam County at the Cougar Den here at North Putnam High School alongside Coach Dale Carlson. I am Kurt Darling. It is a Western Indiana Conference matchup as well as a county rivalry here between these two ball clubs as the South Putnam Eagles have the lead over North Putnam 21 to 6. Coach, your thoughts on that first half here? Well, you know, both teams got off to a little bit of a slow start, and I think in a game like this, you have emotions running high, so we saw some penalties, some bad snaps, uh, but South Putnam was able to kind of get some rhythm on offense. Of course, they had the short field a couple of times. This game could be a little bit more out of hand in South Putnam's favor if the North Putnam defense hadn't shown up on a couple of those really short fields that uh, South Putnam had. They came up with a couple of big stops. Of course, it seemed that North Putnam's offense is finally starting to get some momentum and is able to move the ball. They just didn't have enough time here uh, to end the half. So it'll be interesting to see the adjustments that get made at halftime, uh, what uh, each coach decides to do here to, to try and figure out a way to get their team, you know, either North Putnam moving in, back in the game or South Putnam a chance to put it away. South Putnam has certainly been crisp throwing the ball tonight. Wyatt Mullen, 154 yards by my unofficial count through the air so far tonight. That's a solid performance in the first half. A absolutely, and you know we knew Wyatt Mullen could throw the football. We knew that he was going to be able to put some yards up. He's been getting pretty good protection. When the protection is broken down, he's been very cool, uh, keeping his eyes downfield, finding open receivers, uh, and able to uh, you know pick somebody up. Uh, and it's just played really, really well tonight. And, of course, he had the big play on defense right there at the end of the half to, to stop North Putnam from potentially uh, getting another score. And so now if you're North Putnam, though, obviously things have not gone the way that you would like them. They've only put up six points. They had a blocked PAT 
attempt. That was a very good defensive effort there by South Putnam. But nevertheless, they were able to put a drive together and have a man wide open downfield, Brogan Woodall, getting that 42-yard touchdown pass from Christian Kramer early on in the second quarter. Yeah, that's that little uh, quick screen and go outside where you have one of your receivers fake a block and go. They actually hit that uh, uh, either a week or two weeks ago in, in one of their games. So uh, they do have the potential to make big plays. And, and let's face it, you know, they had a couple of things going early and then would have a bad snap or a bad penalty that took them out of uh, an opportunity to, to potentially get a drive and put points on the board. You know, so if they can square up uh, the snaps, uh, if they can uh, eliminate the penalties, uh, they might have a chance to get back in the game here in the second half. So we talked about the success of this South Putnam squad, just about this growing success of the squad that Coach Chuck Sorrell is putting together. Just to kind of add to that a little bit, South Putt has gone at the last three, the three seasons with a winning season. They have six winning seasons in the last decade. That also includes a sectional championship in 2013, 2018, and then in the COVID year of 2020. Now, keep in mind, this is a team that could have probably had a deep run in the state final, in the state tournament a season ago. But as we mentioned, we, they ran into that big juggernaut of Lutheran in their sectional opening game. But still, bottom line is this, Coach, with an enrollment of 388 students at South Putnam High School this year, that puts them officially in the 1A count based on the new classification rules for the IHSAA. They have really put together a really good squad with the numbers that they have. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we touched on the, the, the desire to try and not have as many players going both ways. And when you look at, at young players getting an opportunity to play, whether it's a, a freshman offensive lineman or a freshman receiver or a sophomore receiver, you know, that experience that they gain, you know, when they're seniors, that means they may have played 40 or 50 games by the time they get to the end of their career. That's a lot of snaps. That's a lot of game time. It's a lot of experience, and that experience allows you to have success, you know, out on the field, and I think that's why Coach Sorrell and South Putnam have been able to string you know, the, the type of seasons together that they have, uh, and, and it takes a lot of guts to commit to not having your best players playing both ways all the time. And obviously, we saw uh, you know, Mullen make that interception at the end. He's already got four for the season in, in two and a half games. So obviously they do have some players playing both ways, but not as many as you usually see at the 1A level. So talking about South Putt or North Putt in that in particular, they are two-way and they have many players playing two ways. One in particular obviously is, uh, is Christian Kramer, who was going kind of going in and out there at the safety spot as well. But Brogan Woodall, Wes Murphy, Hank Wood, as well as Brody Kincaid, and then Braden Glaze, Braxton Mitchell, and Neil Bryan. All of these players play significant reps on offense as well. They are also getting plenty of reps on defense as well. So a little bit less to choose from in spite of the fact they're a two-way school. Yeah, and, and they, you know, of course, numbers, I think, help. But, you know, when you look at the sideline, you look at the rosters, the, the total numbers, there isn't that much of a discrepancy. A few more players on the South Putnam roster. But, again, I think that that allows – players to want to come out and play football because they know they're not just going to be standing in their sidelines. They're going to have a chance to play. They see that there are freshmen out there playing varsity football. There are sophomores out there playing varsity football. And, you know, the other part of that is, too, is in practice during the week, yes, guys, I'm sure, know offensive and defensive positions. You have to do that. But if you're not a starter, say, in the defensive line and you're playing mostly in the offensive line, you're getting most of your practice reps as an offensive lineman, so you're honing your craft at that position most of the time as you go through your practices. So, you know, all that I think adds up to, again, fresher legs in the fourth quarter, fresher legs in games 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, whatever you get as the season goes along. So we're about midway through halftime here as the South Putnam Eagles have the commanding lead over North Putnam in a county rivalry here in the northern part of the county just south of Rochdale here at North Putnam High School. 21-6 to six is your halftime score. We'll take another timeout when we come back. More halftime coverage here on the ISC Sports Network. Want lightning-fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa. From last to fast. And wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town. So you can download huge files in a flash. Stream videos at blazing speeds and game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. 
McCulley in time. Oh, no! It's good. <laughs> this one is caught. There you oh, go. Wow, Dawson makes a great catch. <laughs> Spin, win, three, bury it for Leland Walker. Tie the game, they do, with a dunk by Malik Edmonds. What a play. Oh, my oh, goodness. I feel a little momentum starting to fall. Got it in oh. the air. Wrestler! Oh. Wrestler! Whoa! Want lightning fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa. From last to fast. And wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town. So you can download huge files in a flash. Stream videos at blazing speeds. And game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. Ball here. Harris scores. It went in, in and into the back of the net. A little fireworks in the first half. Throw it up for Tillman. Whoa. Oh. My goodness. 122-60 for Penn. Oh, what a swim. Six. Six of them. Welcome back here to North Putnam High School for a County Rivalry Night here on the ISC Sports Network as the South Putnam Eagles have the lead over the North Putnam Cougars. Coach, let's take a look at some highlights from that first half. Needless to say, a good start here for South Putnam here in the early going. Yeah, right there, just the uh, the fumble uh, gave South Putnam great field position, but you know what? North Putnam defense stepped up and forced a field goal attempt, bad snap, and uh, you've got a turnover on downs. And, uh, and a big, big defensive uh, series for North Putnam. But then things started to gel on offense here for, Sa for South Putnam as they get it close there. A big grab who was taken by Wyatt Switzer, who had a heck of a day so far in this first half. And that sets up this one-yard run by Harcourt. Yeah, Switzer does a really nice job finding opening in the zones, adjusting his routes to the openings. And, of course, um, Kramer or Mullen puts the ball right where it needs to be. The defense has had a game as well at Keenan Mowry Shields. One of the big players on that big tackle for loss a few plays back. And then Switzer again with another grab and then another big run and catch here downfield again to Wyatt Switzer. Yeah, and, and you know, the play before that when Switzer caught that seam route, that's a difficult throw and catch to get the ball up in the air down the field on that seam route to the inside. The angle the quarterback has to drop the ball in there is very tight. That's a tough play, and they made it look easy. Things started to get going, though, for North Putnam there late in that second quarter. Yeah, North Putnam was able to run the football a little bit. Uh, they were able to uh, do some things with uh, with some quick screens. And, of course, right here you had the quick screen and then the, the uh, hit out of bounds, uh, which was able to give North Putnam, you know, field position. And there you can see the screen and go right there. And, unfortunately, uh, uh, North Putnam, or South Putnam jumped on it, and uh, North Putnam was able to get the big play for a touchdown. That was a 42-yard catch right there by Brogan Woodall. But still... The defense kept things going for a little bit for the Cougars, but once again, South Putnam was able to take advantage of some good field position to wind down the clock and keep things moving downfield late in that second yeah, quarter. You know, really, North Putnam defense, considering of where they've uh, uh, had the, the ball to start, uh, has really played pretty well tonight, and uh, they're going to need to play very well here in the second half to, in order to give North Putnam a chance to win the game. And then here's an interception late in that second, in that first half, that Stop things short, some momentum right there for the Cougars as they keep the score here at 21 to six. Coach, you have been a coach of football for quite a long time. You have coached at many different places throughout your career. I'm sure you have been in similar situations like this before. If you are a North Putnam coach, what do you tell your team here at halftime? Well, again, you're gonna talk about, we've gotta be able to execute the fundamentals. We've gotta be able to execute our snaps. We cannot have 
what I would call dumb penalties, the, the procedures, the offsides. We've got to eliminate those things. You know, if you're going to be aggressive and something happens, that's one thing. Uh, but we have to be able to execute the fundamentals of our positions. And that's really what's hurt North Putnam here because they have had some things going offensively, but then they get a bad snap, they get a procedure call, and, and they end up with, you know, first and 30 or second and 30, and then they have no chance on that, on that drive to make anything happen. So just to put it in perspective here as regards to some stats from my chicken scratch that I have here in the press box at the moment. The South Putnam Eagles so far by my count have 206 yards of total offense, 154 yards of those through the air off of the yard uh, off the arm of Wyatt Mullen. He has only incompleted nine total passes out of the plethora of throws that he has had all game long. There are also 52 yards on the ground from South Putnam between Colby Harcourt and Zach Dorsett, as well as Wyatt Mullen. On the other side of the coin, though, it is a much different story. North Putnam, 68 yards through the air, the majority of those on that one touchdown catch to Brogan Woodall. That is 68 yards through the air, but then they only have 19 yards on the ground. In fact, Coach, they played the majority of that first half in the red when it comes to rushing yards. They were able to get back on top of that, and now they have only less than 100 yards of total offense. When you hear those stats, Coach, what, what stands out to you? Well, it's, it's again, it's a lot of that, a lot of the negative yardage, though, is because of the bad snaps. I mean, when you look at losing 15, 20 yards uh, on a snap, you know, that's going to obviously make your stats look, look, look pretty bad. And I think, again, that puts the onus on, on North Putnam to have to throw the football, to have to make plays down the field. And South Putnam's done a nice job. You know, they've gotten some pressure, uh, but when they've had North Putnam backed up, they've backed up, they've played coverage. And so, you know, they haven't been uh, uh, giving up, you know, the big plays except for the one uh, the one there right at the end of the, the second quarter. So, uh, again, uh, as we as we said uh, at the beginning of this segment, uh, North Putnam's got to clean up those little things, but those little things get you beat. Meanwhile, South Putnam keep pretty, pretty much keep the status quo at this point, I would say. Yeah, I mean, they just need to keep kind of doing what they're doing, and, and I, would, I would think we're going to see a heavy dose of uh, Colby Harc Harcourt here uh, running the football. Uh, but, you know, Mullen makes some big plays throwing the ball, and... and uh, uh, you, know, you can see some play action uh, and, and uh, Mullen then trying to take some shots down the field. We'll take another quick timeout to kick off for the second half coming at you at the other end of it right here on the ISC Sports Network. Uh, again? Tortured by technology? Have no fear. Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. Shot at the buzzer. Oh, 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 she oh, got it. Oh, oh my goodness, what a Pretty. shot. Hello. Did it again. Hello. Made the highlight reel again. <laughs> that goes to Metro and all kinds of room to run. Down the middle of the field and he will not be touched. Jackson, hello! There we go. Stokes throws it, caught ball, ricochets! Wow. A huge hit! Wow. This has been an amazing display of goal scoring. Uh, again? Tortured by technology? Have no fear. Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications, technology for real people. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer-free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi-Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact Endeavor and supercharge your internet today. Final minute here of halftime, getting set for the second half of this county rivalry between North Putnam and South Putnam on the ISC Sports Network. Alongside Coach Dale Carlson, 
I'm Kurt Darling. There you see Neil Bryan, the wide receiver for North Putnam, has yet to get a catch here this evening. In fact, he has yet to get a catch this season. He is a six foot one senior. How much do you think that the uh, Punt that the Cougars are going to try and get going through the air from the sophomore quarterback Christian Kramer in this. You know, I, th I think that uh, th he's been their offense, both rushing and passing, the first two games of this of the season. Uh, they've got to try and get some consistency uh, going. Got to get him a little bit more involved. I think in the game, both uh, from the quarterback run perspective as well as. Uh, just getting the passing game going. I think, unfortunately, South Putnam's done a really nice job in coverage down the field. There haven't been a lot of open blue shirts running running free, uh, and so Kramer has not had a chance really to uh, to show us his passing skills yet tonight. But, you know, when you're already down two scores, you've only got uh, 24 minutes to go, you've got to try and make something happen. So I would assume we're going to see a little bit more passing out of, uh, out of the Cougars here in the second half. So they put another three minutes on the clock here after a 20-minute halftime. So we're going to have a little bit longer to go here. As you see, again, head coach Chuck Sorrell there, the commander of the number five ranked South Putnam Eagles in Class 1A. Of course, that's something that we've neglected to mention is the fact that they are number five in the Class 1A polls so far through, through, through two games of the season. A 69-0 win over Cloverdale in their opener, followed up by a win over Owen Valley. 46 to 6 and that one stands out to me coach because Owen Valley a season ago was contending for a state championship they lost a lot of talent from last year yeah they did but uh, you know that's kind of the nature of the game you have to to, to reload and and uh, South Putnam came back and put a put a big hurt on a team that that almost won a state championship last year and you know who knows uh, they keep playing the way they're playing this could be uh, this could be their year to make it really deep run into the playoffs they certainly have the talent to do do it with as well of course Chuck Searle the head coach offensive coordinator Seth Hammond and defensive coordinator Brad Hudson among the staff there on the sideline for South Putnam again North Putnam has not beaten the Eagles the last two times that they have met they met a season ago, and South Putnam won that contest. They did not play at all in 2021, but they did meet in 2020, and that, too, was a win for South Putnam. So North Putnam has not beaten the Eagles in the last four seasons, which, when it comes to a rivalry, that can be a little bit of a thorn in your side when it comes to something like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. You hate to lose to your rival four or five straight times. You want to find a way to get one of those wins. How do we not have a rivalry game in one year in the season? I mean, that does. How does that? I tried tech, I tried track, I, I tried tracking down an explanation for that. Uh, none was procured. So <laughs> we'll just uh, leave it at the fact that they did not play in 2021. Did not play in 2021. Well, you know, it, again, you you want to you always want to beat your rival. Uh, you you want to have. Uh, uh, you want to have the, the ability to, to see your buddies walking up in the county and in town and say, hey, we got you this year. Unfortunately, North Putnam hasn't been able to say that for the last five, six years. Of course, these teams playing in what amounts to an island conference, except for one non-conference game that will be played between these two teams at some point during the year. For North Putnam, it'll be Covenant Christian coming up on September 8th which will be next week. That'll be on the road at Zionsville Middle School, which is where Coveted Christian plays their home contest. But then South Putnam will go up against Heritage Christian on October 6th. That'll be a 7.30 kickoff down in Indianapolis. So other than that, that is the only non-conference games that these two teams get all season long. The rest are Western Indiana Conference opponents and again, they have the division system, five teams in the green division, or rather six teams in the green division, five in the gold division of the, of the WIC. And the winners of both of those divisions at the end of the regular season, respectively, will duke it out for a conference championship game. Again, one of the few conferences in Indiana that actually does a conference title game at the end of the season. And that's why these wins are so very, very important. You want to get every conference win that you can so you have a chance to play in that conference championship game. South Putnam at the top of the green division right now in the Western Indiana Conference at 1-0 after, after their win over Owen Valley and Cloverdale earlier this season. Kickoff again goes to North Putnam. Second half underway. And it's a bobbled snap, or rather bobbled catch there by Wes Murphy, and he'll bring it back to the 10 yard line and not a good starting position here not a, certainly not the way you want to start the second half here if you're the Cougars no you don't and again that's another freshman Branson uh, Ensor who plays wide receiver 
uh, but was also covering kicks. Gets down the field, makes a, a nice tackle, and uh, puts uh, North Putnam inside the 15-yard line. It's a long field to go uh, to uh, start the second half for the Cougars. The defense has been superb here tonight as it stands for the Eagles. They have a fumble recovery, a couple tackles for loss, and an interception. Kramer going to hand it off to Murphy this time. He has a little bit of running room to the outside. Actually, that's going to be Glaze on the carry, and he powers forward for a gain of six. Yeah, it's that uh, guard uh, tackle counterplay again. Do a nice job sealing the edge, kicking out, get that big offensive tackle up the field, and a nice uh, seven, eight-yard gain here uh, to start the second half for North Putnam. A lot more than I had, and it's actually a nine-yard gain. So second down and short as Glaze again on the carry, and he is going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten a yard, but he's still going to be short of the first down. Yeah, ran the counter play again, this time just out of a different formation. North Putnam likes to run the same plays, just giving you a different formation looks, different presentation to the defense. This time, uh, South Putnam's able to uh, uh, make a nice stop there and give him a third and short here. And the official's going to get a few things in order here. Looks like they're going to measure it. They are going to measure to see if Braden Glaze and did in fact get the first down. And it was difficult to tell from with all those bodies in there on the replay whether he uh, whether he got it or not. Looks like where they marked it, he's, I mean, well short, but. It appears you have to get to at least the 25 yard line to get the first down here, but we will get the chain gang to come out here to the middle of the field to see exactly where the spot lies. And so they stretch it out, and he is appearing to be a little short by maybe just a few chain links. Yeah, it looked like the spot on the far side had him uh, had that a little, a little longer. But uh, this is a nice little third down situation. It's a big third down for North Putnam. They really need to get a first down here uh, and keep this drive going. First downs have been sparse for the Cougar offense so far tonight. In fact, by my unofficial count, they have about five or six. I bet if they put uh, Kramer under center here, they're going to go quarterback sneak again. They got pretty good push the last time they were in this situation in the second quarter. Third down and less than a yard. Kramer going under center again, a quarterback sneak, and he appears to fall forward and to just get enough for the first down. Uh, they're not, nah, they did move the chains. They're going to eyeball it and say that he got it. So another rare first down here for North Putt. Well, North Putt need, needed that. They've got to keep putting those first downs together. Again, you see that nice push uh, where Kramer gets just enough to get the first down. Uh, but it's good, uh, good opening start here for North Putnam. Eagles showing blitz here with Aiden Beatles looking hungry in the defensive backfield. Kramer gets the handoff to Murphy, and that's a big push up front there by Kyle Glasson, who gets a tackle for loss. Yeah, I tried to uh, just run a little uh, zone play right here, and uh, Glasson does a nice job with the penetration, is able to uh, ward off a block and uh, make a tackle for, uh, for a loss here. Uh, you could tell that uh, South Putnam was going to bring some pressure there. I'm kind of surprised that uh, when they're doing the check with me, North Putnam maybe didn't try to either go outside or go to a pass play. Gus Monday in there with a little bit of help on that tackle for loss there for Kyle Glasson. Kramer back to throw, fires. It is caught this time, the first grab of the night by Neil Bryan. And that is a solid game through the air out to the 30-yard line. Uh, North Putnam's already hit a couple of bubble screens. This time they had the bubble screen by the inside receiver, but the outside receiver ran the slant route and was able to uh, get a nice gain, give him a third and four here. An 11-yard gain. Just short of a first down, though, but another big pitch and catch over the middle to Wes Murphy, and that is good for a first down. Yeah, it looked like a true RPO play right there. Uh, Kramer was reading the uh, backside linebacker. Scott saw him step up. Nice little seam for the receiver and uh, first down. So North Putnam with a little bit of momentum on their side now. The another, another double handoff move here as Murphy has a lot of move up the middle and he gets out to midfield. Yeah, who was on the lead block right there? That was Christian Kramer off that double handoff, getting a little kick out block, gave uh, Murphy a seam here and uh, we've got a second and short. <laughs> a 
49 yard line. Kramer rolls out to his right side. Kramer gets across midfield and is tackled at about the 44 yard line. Another solid run there by Kramer. Yeah, you know, they tried to go with that double move on the uh, screen and go on the outside. Wyatt Switzer for South Putnam does a great job reading it. Uh, Kramer's got to go, use his legs, but he's able to uh, pick up a first down and a little bit more. And uh, South Putnam's, or North Putnam's got a great drive going here. And now North Putnam getting the play call in here from the sideline here as they're taking their time. Kramer, bobbled snap, he handles it this time, quick release and he's just gonna throw that away. And they're gonna say that might be intentional grounding, coach. Yeah, I don't, there was nobody downfield. I'm not so sure if that was, a, again, another RPO type play. Oh, it's uh, gonna be against Putnam. It's gonna be South Putnam gonna be on the, the guilty party. I didn't see what the official signaled right there. Looked like that was an RPO play, and I'm not so sure if there wasn't a little uh, miscommunication between between Kramer and the receiver uh, that uh, he ended up just heaving the ball down the field there. But nonetheless, it's going to be a nice uh, break here for South Putnam with or for North Putnam with the penalty on South. So it's going to be a clipping call there on South Putnam. So that will give North Putnam another sizable chunk of yardage as Paxton O'Brien comes out of the ball game for North Putnam. He's a little gimpy. Yeah, if you're South Putnam, this is not the way you wanted to start the second half by giving up some big plays on offense and then having some big penalties here. But North Putnam's got to cash in here on this drive. That's now the eighth penalty of the night on the Eagles. So the ball moves now to the 30-yard line. Pitch comes off here to Murphy, and he gets immediately swarmed in the backfield there in on the tackle was Keenan Mowry Shields. Uh, and again with Shields, and I think Kyle Glasson might have also had, a, had a, a piece of that. Did a nice job of collapsing the offensive line, uh, forcing the uh, running back to come up inside. And again, we've got another penalty this time, though, on North Putnam on the hold. So the holding call will be the ninth penalty of the night on the Cougars. I will say this, Coach. North Putnam, they had a lot of penalties in that first quarter. They were only limited to two in that second quarter all, all uh, quarter long. Yeah, they did a better job in the second quarter, but uh, this is a big holding call because now you're putting yourself way behind the sticks here uh, when you had a lot of momentum moving the football. So what was first down and 10 is now first down and 20. Kramer with time. Fires outside and it goes right through the hands of Brogan Woodall. Yeah, again, it was that little sl uh, bubble slant play that they had hit earlier uh, in the drive. And uh, unfortunately, Woodall uh, wasn't able to come down to it. Kind of hate to see him have to jump on that. Uh, when he jumped up, when he went to catch it, his arms were bent. You'd rather have him running, extending his arms, catching and tucking the football, not jumping and then bending his arms. We're at the eight minute mark here of quarter number three. Kramer spins, checks down to his receiver, that is Glaze. And Glaze gets tripped up, getting back close to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of nine. Yeah, that was a little screen pass that uh, looked like it was gonna be a big play. Unfortunately, uh, Glaze got uh, tripped up just there at the end. I didn't quite see what number that was for South Putnam coming in, but nice play design, little misdirection screen. Uh, missed it on there and uh, that little shoestring tackle may have saved a touchdown. So they're going to back it up a little bit. It's going to be a gain of six. Third down and 14. Kramer has a little bit of room. Tries to find a receiver. Has his man. That's Murphy. He's close to a first down. He gets it across the 15. Flag on the play. And he's going to be brought down at about the 10-yard line. But we'll check the penalty here, Coach. Uh, I don't know if they're going to call a block in the back uh, on the uh, after the catch and run. Um, or a blindside block. I can't quite tell what he's what they're calling. And it's going to be against North Putnam, it appears here, Coach. Yeah, it's either a block in the back, blindside block. Yeah, that's that's tough. You know, you're trying to make a play, you're trying to get a block, and uh, receivers trying to, to be aggressive, and unfortunately, you get uh, you get that block, you get that uh, blindside block call. So blindside block against North Putnam is going to negate a big gain here as we take a look here at the replay. An excellent play design here, getting it to Murphy. 
but it's all going to be for naught here. So as you see, just coming in here, and there it is right yeah. there. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a, definitely a blindside block. So that's going to bring it back to about third down and eight here on yeah. the five-yard penalty. Well, so you know that this is four-down territory for North Putnam, so this is manageable. Again, they've got to execute the snap, and they can't have any uh, silly penalties right here. Just uh, give your players a chance to make a play, play some football. Kramer looking to go to the air again. Again goes over the outstretched arm of Brogan Woodall incomplete. Yeah, Kramer rolling out to his left right there. Sometimes the right-handed quarterback has a hard time turning his shoulders to get that nice downhill throw and causes the ball to sail. And that's exactly what happened to Kramer on that. He just couldn't quite turn his shoulders around to complete the pass to a wide open Woodall. Big play here on both sides. So the Cougars are taking their time now, getting the right play in. In fact, as the play clock continues to wind down here, Coach. Yeah, they better hurry or may have to call timeout. Both teams still have all three of their timeouts. Play clock down to one. They just get it off. And looking to the left side, and it falls incomplete, trying to get it to Woodall. And it's a turnover on downs. A promising drive comes up empty right there for the Cougars. Yeah, Car Connor Arnold does a nice job covering the slant play. There's a little play fake in there trying to hold the linebackers, get that slant throw behind him. And uh, Arnold does a nice job, gets his hand inside, breaks it up. North Putnam burns a lot of clock here in the uh, start of the third quarter, but comes up empty. The Cougars burn off eight minutes. Rather, six minutes of that first quarter, of that third quarter. And now the handoff this time is going to be faked to Hardcore. It's going to be kept here by Mullen. And he plows forward for a gain of six. Yeah, just a little zone read. Uh, this time trying to read uh, one of the interior defensive linemen on the uh, outside zone play to Harcourt. And uh, the uh, defense chased, uh, chased, Har uh, chased Harcourt, so Mullen kept it for a nice gain up the middle. And on top of the 154 yards through the air for Mullen, he has accounted for... A good chunk of rushing yards as well. He'll get some more here. He falls forward. Actually, it's going to be a tackle for loss here by the Cougar defense. Yeah, it was the same play design off the outside zone play. Uh, this time, uh, the, the uh, uh, North Putnam Cougars were able to scrape and get off and make a play. Uh, nice job by um, Jaden Laffin. Thank you. Getting the initial contact there. Also some help from Braden Glaze. Third down and short here for the Eagles. Mullen going back to the air. Has his man right off of the chest plate and incomplete. Again, just a little hitch route to the single receiver. You've seen South Putnam uh, be able to complete those on these third and four or five yard to gain here. And again, um, he had Kramer uh, playing way off on third and, and medium. And uh, lucky that he dropped it. That would have been a first down for South Putnam. But as it is... They're going to have to punt the ball. North Putnam gets another shot. Logan Sillery, the intended receiver there. You can see he probably wants that one back. And so North Putnam catching a break on that three and out forced by the defense here after they go most of the way of the field and come up empty. So here's the punt from Kendall. And it'll take an eagle bounce across the 35-yard line and come to rest out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. So while we have a moment, Endeavor Communications would like to say welcome to the high school football season. We're proud to be a part of this local event and wish all the athletes good luck during this competition. Together with our members, Endeavor Communications is committed to helping our local community thrive. For more information about the communities we serve and the services we offer, visit us at weendeavor.com. So a timeout looks like it's going to be taken here. Uh, just trying to get the ball spotted again. So no timeout called, just making sure they get the ball spotted correctly. Well, that's a good uh, that's a good opening series there for this North Putnam defense to get a three and out. Uh, offense now has got to get the ball down, get some points on the board. The Cougars moved the ball the previous drive, but it ended with a turnover on downs. Here's a pitch to Murphy. And he gets corralled from behind in a late flag 
Coach, we may have a horse collar tackle here. It looked like that might have been the way that he was brought to the ground. That could be. It looks like that he might have fumbled, too, with the horse collar tackle. It looked like the official on the far sideline pointed at uh, South Putnam's ball here. Let's see what the officials come up with on the discussion. So it might be a fumble, depending on how things are sorted out here amongst the officials here at about the 35-yard line. Again, tried to run that little toss uh, uh, counterplay to the to the wing back, and uh, fortunately there wasn't a lot of blocking there. Turned the corner a little bit and got hit right away. So again, we have a flag on the play as we take a look at the replay here. So again, Murphy, yeah, the ball yep. is out before he's down, and it is recovered by South Putnam, but again, we'll check the penalty. You know, again, looking at the at the penalty, so I thought it was a... And it is a face mask on North Putnam, or rather South Putnam. So that will negate the fumble and give an automatic first down to North Putnam. Well, you know, again, that's another big uh, penalty by the South Putnam defense. Uh, that's the second one they've had already here in the second quarter, allowing South Putnam or North Putnam to get uh, the ball going forward. Instead of it being a turnover, it's now first down for North Putnam. Nine penalties on South Putnam. The majority of those coming here in this second half already. Clock continues to roll here in quarter number three. And it looks like North Putnam didn't have all the personnel out there. They finally get everybody out and Kramer. Looks outside to Murphy, has some running room, it sheds a tackler before he's immediately corralled down across the 45 yard line on the tackle there for South Putnam. Yeah, it's another little quick screen out on the perimeter. They've got South Putnam playing soft on the coverage, so they're able to throw the ball out and uh, get some real positive yards on the, on the quick screen. We had another penalty. Nine yard gain and another penalty. Not exactly sure it was called on the far side. Um, either that or maybe a late hit. It, it looked like Connor Arnold may have come in late there on that one for South Putnam. The flag's on the far sideline, as you mentioned, Coach. Yeah, I, I don't know if they called an illegal shift. I mean, because we had a North Putnam player step off the field and then come back, but that was away from that official. So I'm not, I guess we're going to have to wait till the officials make their call right here. And now they're going to pick up the penalty, so they're going to wave it off. And it'll be second down and a yard here for the Cougars. Again, uh, North Putnam's got something going here, but they're going to have to continue to uh, make positive plays here, and uh, they're in a, a, a second and short situation here. Might see him take a shot. Inside of five minutes here in the third quarter. Kramer sends Murphy in motion to the outside. He's going to keep it and duck down low. And standing up, he gets the first down across the 40. Yeah, he just motioned the running back out and then came back with the quarterback counterplay right here, uh, which was a you know good call here. You can see the, the pullers getting out in front, and uh, Kramer's able to fight his way through for five or six yards, get the first down. Clock continues to tick. North Putnam again moving the football. Murphy gets it stripped. It's taken by South Putnam. Another turnover by the North Putnam Cougars. Comes at a costly time. And on the fumble recovery is Caden Switzer. Uh, just a really nice job here. We don't get the ball. Doesn't get secured enough. You can see he had both hands over it, but then uh, left it uh, outside. Didn't have it tucked up. And unfortunately, uh, uh, Murphy wasn't able to hold on, get stripped. And uh, the South Putnam defense comes up with a big play. So Preston Pelfry will actually be credited with the fumble recovery, the strip there by Keenan Mowry Shields, who has had a heck of a night on defense. Here's Mullen falling forward. He coughs it up, and it fumbles back to, to the Cougars. Wow. Oh, know, my goodness, Coach. We talked about turnovers at the beginning of the game, and now we're seeing what... Uh, 
what happens when you turn the ball uh, over, you know, you're just going to continue to give uh, North Put or South Putnam just going to continue to give North Putnam some some uh, some hope here and uh, the, to have to, to get a chance to get themselves back in the game. And the player who recovered that fumble is Wes Murphy, the one who fumbled the ball on offense on the previous play. All sins are forgiven when you can make a play like that. So we're right back to where we started de facto on the previous drive. And now here's Kramer, feeling the pressure, looks downfield, just out of the reach of Brogan Woodall. Yeah, pretty good coverage there by, uh, by Wyatt Switzer. That was uh, maybe needed a little bit more air on that throw. Uh, ran a little play action, and uh, maybe just a little bit more air on that throw. Might have had an opportunity for Woodall to get down the field. 21 to six, that has been the score since halftime. It feels like it should be more or less depending on which way of which way you're looking at this game. But bottom line is it has been competitive on defense. Pitch here to Murphy. Trying to avoid the pressure and he does not. Again, trying to get themselves uh, on the outside on the pitch in the uh, in the outside sweep. But Connor Connor Arnold from South Button does a nice job uh, fighting through a block, coming up and makes a play here for a, a little or no gain. So that'll be a loss of five actually here as Connor Arnold gets the tackle for loss. He came all the way from the near side of the football field, as you can see, to make that tackle. Yeah, it's a very nice open field play by Connor Arnold on that, and that's what you want to see. Uh, your uh, secondary players coming out and being able to make those types of tackles in the open field. Third down and 15. This is a big third down here for the Cougars. Kramer rolling out to his left. He heaves it downfield looking for Murphy and again a little too long. Wyatt Mullen on the coverage. Yeah, Mullen did a nice job covering that uh, crossing route coming from all the way across the field. It's that little uh, kind of fake to the right. Uh, Kramer rolls uh, left. He had a little bit of pressure coming from his backside. Uh, maybe that's what caused the throw to be a little bit off in terms of timing, but you also have to give uh, Wyatt, uh, or Wyatt Mullen a uh, good job on the coverage. It's probably going to force a punt here by North Putnam. So we're expecting a punt here, and Kramer does put his boot into it. And that's a decent punt right there from Kramer to pin the Eagles inside their own 30. Yeah, ball is first and 10 now. So now South Putnam has not done anything on offense. They were pretty much controlling the game from the second quarter, you know, the, their big second quarter. And now they've done nothing on offense in two possessions right here. We'll see if they can figure, figure it out here and try and get some points on the board or at least get a first down, I should say, uh, before we get down to putting points on the board. Meanwhile, if you're the Cougar defense, though, you've been pretty stout. But if you're head coach Scott Moore, you can't ask that much more from them out of what they've given so far here over the last seven minutes. No, they've the Cougar defense, and they've actually played very well here, I think, this whole game, considering where some of the field position that they've had to start with. Mullen with a man in motion. He's going to hand it off now to Switzer, who tried to turn the corner on the jet sweep, and he gains a couple. Yeah, we're gonna, I think we're going to have a holding call out on the edge on one of the receivers. So, so again, South Putnam, you know, just kind of shooting themselves in the foot here with penalties and, and uh, you know, uh, just, just not executing their offense. So this should negate the two-yard gain, and it will, as it'll be a 10-yard holding penalty. And that'll be number 10 on the night here for the Eagles. Yeah, again, you want to push them back, uh, try and uh, take as much field position as you possibly can here, uh, and, and hopefully uh, get a stop, get the ball back for North Putnam in, in good situation. Again, North Putnam trying to claw back here in this one. They need a stop. It's first down and 20. Mullen, play action. And he's just going to get rid of it. He was outside of the box. No intentional grounding there. Yeah, great coverage uh, by the uh, the blue shirts there, the secondary for North Putnam. A uh, little play fake to uh, to Harcourt, uh, trying to hold the linebackers. But North Putnam's doing a great job clamping down on the receivers and also getting some pressure onto uh, Wayne Wyatt Mullen. The 
Clock stopped inside of three minutes here. It's been a long third quarter for both of these teams. They've been unable to move the ball for the most part outside of North Putnam's long drive that ended with a turnover on downs to open up this quarter. Here's Mullen, feeds it outside. As his receiver, a good run there by Switzer. He ch chugs back inside, gets the first down. A second and third effort there by the sophomore receiver yields a first down there for the Eagles. Now, I think he's still a little bit, a little bit short there because they were so long. I think we're going to have third and about seven or eight. But that's a great, great effort by uh, by Switzer. He is just so good after the catch, and he's only a sophomore. Of course, pardon me, I was looking at the wrong pylon on the far side of the field. So it'll be third down and seven. Mullen looking to throw again, has a hole, he's gonna tuck it, nearly has it stripped, but he gets tackled at about the 35 yard line, still about a few yards shy of the first down. Uh, you know, if I'm, uh, if I'm Coach Sorrell here, I'm probably going for this. And that's why I'm not on the sidelines, because he's gonna punt it. <laughs> Certainly would have been bold right there. Yeah, it would have been bold, but uh, his defense has actually played pretty well, and, and offensively they've been moving the football, but uh, that's why I'm up here making comments, and he's still down there coaching. <laughs> so South Putnam takes some time off the clock here, but they'll punt it away. So it's a low end over end punt that will bounce inside of the 30-yard line, rather the 35-yard line, where the Eagles will down it. So about a minute 14 left to go here in this one. We change sides of the field. And now if you're North Putnam coach, I mean, time is really starting to run out here to not only get one score, but two scores to try and get this one back even. Yeah, the North Putnam just hasn't been able to get that consistency on their drives. Uh, penalties, turnovers, uh, you know, getting stopped on fourth down. Just have to have that consistency, and they're going to need it. They're going to need it here because uh, time certainly is not in their favor. They've only got about 13 minutes to go before this game is over. Again, Coach Sorrell looking for his third win in a row here. South Putnam had an excellent season to see last year before they lost their final two games. They lost their season finale, and then they lost their sectional opener to Lutheran. Kramer gets his man. And that is Woodall for a gain of about five yards on the quick little slant inside. Yeah, a little slant or a little baby dig route, sometimes we call that. White Mullen uh, really broke hard on it. I think he thought he was going to pick it. When that didn't happen, uh, that opened up some more space uh, for a little yards after catch there uh, for, uh, for Woodall. Good throw and tight coverage right there by Kramer. Again, Mullen already has an interception on the night four on the season. Yeah, you can see why, why, why Mullen has those interceptions because he's an aggressive player when that ball's in the air. Kramer, quick handoff here to Murphy, and he tries to slip his way through the line. He may have gotten a yard. Yeah, not a whole lot there on the, uh, again, that little counter play that they like to run. They have had a little bit of success on that play, uh, but uh, South Putnam did a great job filling gaps and, and holding them only to a yard gain. Kramer on third down and four. Gets to the sideline, has his man, but was he getting bounds? He was not. Neil Bryan has the catch, but he was out of bounds when he made it, and that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, just a little corner route coming off the sprint out, and uh, you know, Kramer put the ball uh, out there where it needed to be. Unfortunately, he just couldn't get his feet down inside, and so now you're in a fourth and four situation. You know, again, it's that, it's that deal. Would you go for it here? Do you punt the football away? It looks like they're in the, the kick formation here. Uh, Going to probably punt it away. And, they and got that the is a big jump off sides by South Putnam. And that is a free first down for North Putnam. Yeah, great job with the snap count there by uh, uh, by. Uh, Kramer, and you could see he moved up a little bit, like, well, maybe it's going to be an offensive play. Maybe we're going to run it. And I uh, got South Putnam to jump, and like you said, uh, huge, huge first down. 
Kyle Glasson is the one who jumped. And now here is Braden Glaze who gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. Yeah, not a whole lot, uh, not a whole lot there. Uh, looked like um, Alden Beatles, the all uh, all state player linebacker, came in and made that tackle. Again, Aiden Beatles, he led the team in tackles a season ago for South Putnam with 174. That was 100 more than the second best tackler on the team a season ago. That just puts that in perspective. We can talk more about him and a lot more of this game as we have one quarter left to go at the other end of this timeout. Back in a moment on the ISC Sports Network. Want lightning fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa. From last to fast. And wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town so you can download huge files in a flash. Stream videos at blazing speeds and game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. Want lightning fast internet speeds? Choose Endeavor. Go from slow to whoa, from last to fast, and wait to great. Endeavor Communications is bringing the fastest internet speed in Indiana to your town so you can download huge files in a flash. Stream videos at blazing speeds and game online faster than you thought possible. Think fast and contact Endeavor Communications today at join.weendeavor.com. We flip directions one final time here. Quarter number four in this county rivalry on the ISC Sports Network. North Putnam trailing South Putnam at the moment alongside Coach Dale Carlson. I'm Kurt Darling. Coach, there was... 21 points by South Putnam in that first half. Six by North Putnam in that, in, that, in that first half, rather. None in that third quarter. Yeah, South Putnam is playing the bend but don't break defense so far. They've given up some yards, but they haven't given up any points yet, and they still have a two-score lead. The drive's still alive here for the Cougars. There's a big catch by Bryan for a gain of about three yards out to the 50. And they're getting that again off coverage there by uh, by South Putnam. And you'd like to see uh, Connor Arnold maybe be just a little bit tighter in that quick hitch route. So now you've got uh, third manageable here for uh, North Putnam. They really need a first down here. They've got to get a score on this drive. Last check for me, 88 yards through the air here for Kramer tonight. Kramer has to try a little bit more. This time he's a little short, trying to get out to his receiver, Bro uh, Brogan Wooddahl. Yeah, they tried to run that little like counter uh, sprint pass that they've been running, uh, that they've been running all night. But uh, the defense uh, got penetration that time for South Putnam, and now we're looking at fourth and fourth and about six here. And it's uh, decision-making time here on the North Putnam sideline. Updated stat here, 105 yards through the air tonight here for Kramer by my unofficial count. So a big fourth down here and another penalty. It's going to be offsides on the Eagles. Now this will not be an automatic first down. It's still less than five, it's still five yards, but it will make it from fourth and less than manageable to fourth and more manageable, per se. Yeah, I assume North Putnam's going to go here. That's two times in a row mm -hmm. they kind of lined up in that semi-punt formation. Uh, Kramer got up a little closer to the line of scrimmage, was able to use the hard count, got the movement up front. Now they have a chance to go for it here on fourth down. Kramer and the Cougars are one for one on fourth down here tonight. They bring in an extra tight end on the end of the line. Direct snap to Murphy this time. Murphy tries to push his way forward, and he's still going to be well short in spite of the reach out to the 45-yard line. That'll it, be a turnover on downs. Yeah, it looked like there was a little miscommunication on what the play was going to be. It's a quarterback counterplay, but unfortunately, a second tight end that came in, Caden Hankins, was looking at the sideline when, uh, Mer when Kramer snapped the football and didn't get a block, and so now it's a turnover on downs. And that is a big defensive play right there if you're the South Putnam Eagles, again, trying to protect their lead in what could be their third win of the season here as you get a look at head coach Scott Moore there for the Cougars of North Putnam trying to do what he can here to rally his troops here with one minute and 11 seconds, or rather 11 minutes and 14 seconds left to go here in this game. Keeper to Mullen has a big hole up the middle. 
and he goes for almost a first down. It's a little outside zone read play where they can either give it on the outside zone or um, uh, Mullen can keep it uh, pretty much reading one of the down defensive linemen and uh, good read here. They go, of course go after Harcourt who's a tremendous running back and uh, White just keeps it up middle for uh, almost a first down. Both teams still have all three of their timeouts. And now we have a whistle before the snap, and it's going to be a false start on South Putnam. The penalty's really racking up here in the second half for the Eagles. Yeah, South Putnam's really been shooting themselves in the foot. It hasn't hurt them in terms of a score or, or getting a score, but, uh, you know, you just can't have these types of penalties uh, if, you, if you're going to work to win a football game here tonight. So what was second and short will now be second and five. Mullen looking deep, way over the outstretched arms of Branson Ensor. Yeah, I'm not so sure if we didn't have a little mix-up. She had two players actually running the post route that time. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Mullen overthrew everybody there. It was good coverage by uh, the North Putnam defense. So now it's uh, third and long here. We'll see what South Putnam dials up uh, in this situation. They really need a first down here to keep a drive going. The nose of the football touching the 50-yard line. Here's Mullen, has to evade the pressure, checks down to his running back, Harcourt, and he is very close to a first down, but I do not think he got there, Coach. No, he's a little short. Again, uh, maybe expecting a little bit of a blitz there, so they free release the running back. Uh, really didn't blitz that time. Somebody missed a block up front, and uh, Mullen was able to get the ball out to uh, Harcourt. Good, tough runner, almost got the first down. Of course, they're going to go for it here. Fourth down and one. Harcourt. Punches it up. He is short of the line to gain. There's a bunch of blue shirts uh, right there all over that little isolation play uh, that uh, uh, Southmont has or South uh, Putnam has run a couple of times, even for scores. And uh, right here, North Putnam comes up again big on defense, gets great penetration, and is able to hold them short of the first down. That is the second turnover on downs that the Cougars have forced this half. I mean, and this one comes up at a very crucial time for North Putnam. You know, North Putnam defense has really played pretty well tonight. I've said that a couple of times. Offense has got to find a way to get some points on the board. Kramer again through the air. Outside to O'Brien. And O'Brien lowers his shoulder to get out to midfield. A gain of four. Yeah, he just ran uh, three verticals down the field with the outlet route to O'Brien on the, on the little uh, swing pass. Uh, South Putnam's not trying not to give up the big play, so threw it out short. Only gave up five yards. Clock stopped as he gets tackled out of bounds. Kramer will give it off to his running back, Glaze, and he moves forward close to a first down, about a yard shy. Yeah, just ran the, the little counter play down, down, pull and kick out, get the tackle up the field. Uh, Blake, I thought he got the first down, but they marked it short. So he has just over a yard to go here. Third down and a long one. <laughs> Kramer on the keeper. He's going to get the first down and a little bit more out of it as well as he crosses the 45-yard line. Yeah, I just ran a, just ran a little uh, quarterback outside zone play right there. With plays leading and uh, got enough for the first down. Pretty good push there by those blue shirts against uh, the South Putnam defense. Drive continues here for the Cougars. Kramer looking hard downfield, has a receiver out of the outstretched hands, looking for Brogan Woodall again, just slightly overthrown. Yeah, Brogan Woodall does a nice job running right past, uh, running right past the uh, South Putnam secondary and almost had a big play for a touchdown. That was almost the same play that they scored from 42 yards out on in the first half. Just couldn't connect. But you know, you got to take some shots like that. You've got to try and get the ball pushed down the field and uh, that might open up some things underneath here. Kramer on second down. Looks to the outside and just through the hands of Neil Bryan incomplete. 
That's going to put uh, third and long here. You again would have to think this is four down territory for North Putnam. Uh, as time starting, the clock's winding down. We only have 8.48 left. They've got to desperately get some points on the board. Low snap. Kramer unloads and again overthrows his receiver, Woodall. We have a flag on the play, though, Coach. I, looks like it's in the backfield. It's probably going to be a holding call. I thought Woodall got uh, maybe got uh, held up a little bit there trying to get down the field. You could see him trying to get off a jam. Uh, unfortunately, the officials just let him play going down the field, but now it looks like we had a holding call. Yeah, if you're, And I would imagine... Well, it looks like the Eagles are going to accept this penalty, so it'll make it third down and 20. No, they're changed the call. It's going to be declined. I would imagine that's what they would do there. Yeah, I decline it. It's fourth and 10. Uh, put the onus on uh, North Putnam here to uh, try to make a play here on a fourth down play. A little high stress situation for their offense. Fourth down and 10. Kramer. Looking long over the middle, and it's easily picked off. Caden Switzer is going to fall down and get the second interception of the night here for the Eagles. You know, you're in a fourth and ten situation, so you're trying to run uh, five verticals up the field. And at this situation with, uh, uh, you know, players pretty well covered, you, know, you kind of throw one up and maybe you can get a pass interference call, something. Uh, but unfortunately, it was well short, and it was an easy pick for the uh, South Putnam defense. Caden Switzer getting his first interception of the season. And again, the Eagles take over. Again, we got a bend but not break South Putnam defense. Hardcourt on the ground, and he'll pick up a yard. I would expect we might see the ball in Hardcourt's hands here just a little bit more, uh, trying to run some clock. Such a tough little runner, uh, trying to wear down the North Putnam defense. Again, all t both teams have all three timeouts. South Putnam looking to make it three straight here on the Cougars in their annual rivalry. Mullen to the outside. And going up the sideline and pushed out of bounds there was Branson Inser. That was, uh, again, just a little hitch route. North Putnam's playing loose coverage out there, take advantage. Again, throw the little four-yard hitch route out there and it's almost broke it for a touchdown. You know, again, that's um, Christian Kramer on the coverage out there. That's that two-way thing, a little bit tired. Uh, wasn't able to drive his legs through the tackle and uh, almost gave up a big play. 15 yards on the pass and catch there to Enser. And it's a first down. Fake handoff, Mullen on the keeper, has a big hole, gets to the outside, and he is off to the races. He is going to score again for South Putnam. Touchdown, Eagles. Uh, again, just a little uh, you know, quarterback zone replay here. Fake the outside zone to, uh, to Hartcourt, and Mullen found a seam. You know, he almost broke one of these earlier and was uh, uh, just tripped up. Well, this time... Nobody in the blue is going to make a tackle on him, and that could be the uh, nail in the coffin here tonight. 64-yard scamper there by Mullen. And that is a dagger. And Wyatt Kendall to tack on the PAT. And it is through the uprights. And for the final time tonight, Endeavor Communications would like to say congrats to all the teams competing in girls basketball regional, but also the teams competing here tonight. We're proud to be a part of the local event and wish all the athletes good luck during this competition. Together, we are members of Endeavor Communications, which is committed to helping our local community thrive. For more information about the communities that we serve and the services we offer, be sure to visit us at weendeavor.com. Why is White Mullen impressive or is he impressive? I mean, making plays on defense, obviously throwing the football for a lot of yards, and then getting that big run uh, to, uh, you know, game's not over till it's over, but uh, when you're down three scores and, and haven't been able to get a whole lot of offensive consistency, 
that's going to be tough for South Putnam to come back, or North Putnam to come back after that one. It certainly hasn't been without with a lack of trying, though, for North Putnam. They've been able to move the football relatively well here in this second half, but it just has come down to just not being able to finish when it counts. Yeah, and it's it's making those you know key third or fourth down plays uh, when you have to have them that uh, North Putnam hasn't been able to get here. Uh, tonight and uh, South Putnam finally took advantage of uh, one of those stops and, and got a big play here for a touchdown. 184 yards passing tonight here for Wyatt Mullen. As the Eagles will put it back into the hands of the Cougars here with seven and a half minutes left here in this fourth quarter. It'll be O'Brien this time to bring it back here for the Cougars, and he gets swarmed right around the 15. Yeah, I think that was Neil Bryan. Uh, I'm sorry, not uh, Neil Bryan. That was Caden Switzer, I think, coming in to make that tackle. And so again, the Cougars going to try and salvage what they can here at this point, but it's just been an excellent night here tonight, and there you see Aiden Beatles, the All-State Linebacker there for South Putnam, number 11. Of course, Coach Sorrell says that his numbers may be down this year compared to what the 174 tackles he had a season ago because of how much his defensive line has improved. And that has certainly been on display here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got some really good players on defense for South Putnam, and, and they've been all over the field making plays. But uh, Aiden gets a tackle there on that play. Does a nice job reading the uh, quick pass to the outside. And that's what's impressive about him is the fact that he can get sideline to sideline to make plays. And we have another penalty coming up, and they're going to get Aiden Beatles for unnecessary roughness. And I believe that's the second time he's been called for that tonight. And he is showing a little frustration right there. He thinks he was given a clean tackle, but the officials are saying otherwise. I mean, it was impressive to, to run out there and make the play, but uh, he might have just picked him up and tossed him to the ground. I didn't quite see that at, at the end of the play, but uh, you know, that's, again, another tough break here in terms of penalties on this South Putnam defense. So it's 15 yards and a first down here, and again, it's just kind of keeping things rolling right there. and Could go uh, either way, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know about that. Kramer goes to the outside as he's being tackled, and it falls incomplete. Yeah, you know, I guess they were saying he took him down, he was out of bounds, and the whistle probably blew, but... That's hard when you're running full speed like that, going to make a play. Go, go, go. Hey, oh, wow. 7.06 left to go here in quarter number four. Kramer. Over the middle, trying to find O'Brien, and it's incomplete. Yeah, pretty good coverage. Uh, pretty good coverage downfield by uh, South Putnam. That was again Caden Switzer on the coverage. Did a really good job with that. As the moon begins to rise here over Rochdale, of course you, the camera lens. Can't really do it justice. It is blood red right now. Kramer going deep. And they're going to get pass interference here on the call, trying to find Bryan. Yeah, Neil Bryan uh, got behind the uh, coverage on the, on the post route, and really there was uh, no choice there for uh, the South Putnam defender but to, to get back there and get his hands up. And unfortunately, he got a piece of uh, Bryan to give them the first down. But... A lot better to have the pass interference call, give up a, a penalty for pass interference, and give up a touchdown here. So that is 15 yards from the previous spot, and another first down here for the Cougars. So North Putnam moving by way of penalties from the Eagles as opposed from their own offense here at the moment. I guess you take the yards however you can get them. Absolutely. White Mullen got a little faked in by that uh, uh, run fake there and let the post get behind him. So, and unfortunately now uh, North Putnam's going to jump offside, so going to put themselves in a first and 15. So it's going to be a false start here on North Putnam to back him up five yards. 
penalty number 11 on them on the night. Yeah, it's just been unfortunate. You know, they're able to get a, North Putnam's able to get a big play or get a penalty to give themselves some good field position and then kind of take a step, uh, take a step backwards. Uh, that's unfortunate for their offense tonight. So first down and 15. Kramer on the keeper. Tries to turn the corner, puts the hand in the face of the defender, and he maybe squeezes out a couple yards on the play. Again, who is that on the tackle? It's White Mullen. He's all over the field. Uh, tackles his counterpart at uh, quarterback on the uh, quarterback power play. Time continues to wind down here. Just couldn't quite turn the corner. And Switzer also on there on the initial contact. Here's Kramer getting away from the rush, and it's dropped right into the hands of Braden Glaze. Yeah, that was a good call on the uh, throwback screen there to Braden Glaze. Unfortunately, he couldn't come up with it. If he catches that, he's got a lot of room to run. That would have been the second time they would have caught the South Putnam defense on that uh, little throwback screen to the running back. That will stop the clock, though, which is something in the favor of the Cougars at the moment, but they're still facing third down and a mile here. They have to get to the Eagles' 42-yard line to pick up the first down. They sit at their own 45. Looks like we're going to have a timeout. They're going to try and get a good play call here. You almost have to think that this has to, again, be a, a, a two-play drive right now, uh, so they want to get a good play call to either get them the first down or get them in position to go for it on fourth. We'll take a timeout with them back in a moment here on the ISC Sports Network. Uh Again? Tortured by technology? Have no fear. Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications. Technology for real people. Again? Tortured by technology? Have no fear. Endeavor is here with Speed Geeks. Our Speed Geeks are expert technicians ready to rescue you from technology troubles. Our experts are here to get and keep your Wi-Fi running properly. We'll even make sure all of your devices stay connected. Give us a call or visit weendeavor.com to see if you're in our service area. Endeavor Communications. Technology for real people. Once again, the moon rising over Rochdale here as we get right back into the action. Fourth quarter, midway through it at the moment as Kramer goes over and incomplete on third down and long. And right now the clock is starting to wind down here for the Cougars to try and get any sort of, well, anything going on offense, and they just haven't been able to do it. No, they have not had any offensive consistency tonight, and uh, I think, unfortunately, they're going to have to go for it here in this fourth down situation. Uh, they've got to try and get a first down, to maintain possession of the ball uh, to have any sort of a slim chance tonight. Fourth down and long. Now they're going to back up and punt. And they're going to punt the ball away. Quick pooch punt there, and it'll be a decent punt. The first one inside of the 20 this season for Kramer. Yeah, it's a tough call right there with only six minutes to go, and I know it's fourth and 12, and I uh, hate to second-guess things, but, uh, you know, the way South Putnam all of a sudden was able to get the seam, get that big run, I mean, they're in a position right now where they could potentially run this clock out and then walk away with their third win tonight. North Putnam still has two timeouts. So they can stop the clock at least a couple times if they wish. As Mullen will go off to his running back again, Harcourt, and he is buried in the backfield. Going right up the gut there was O'Brien. Yeah, just trying to run that uh, off-tackle power play again, and uh, unfortunately, it wasn't a whole lot there. Paxton O'Brien uh, closed with the puller and was able to make the tackle for, uh, uh, for a loss of about four. And the clock continues to run, and 
As you mentioned, Coach, if you're the Eagles, you take as much time as you want here with the play clock winding down as well. Yeah, it looks like they're going to let that clock run down almost all the way. Right up the gut goes Harcourt. He is tripped up by a shoestring tackle from Braden Glaze. Yeah, Braden Glaze does a nice job there because if he doesn't make that tackle on Harcourt, uh, that's a big play. First down and maybe even more uh, without that shoestring tackle. That'll bring up third down and nine. And about 15 seconds on the play clock here, so the Eagles are going to take their time. Yeah, just run it, all, run it down as far as you can. And they'll run it down and t take a timeout of their own. And I might be talking over there on the sideline whether they were going to try some sort of a short passing play maybe to see if they could get the get a first down or uh, just run it and, and then punt the ball away if they don't get it. So next on the schedule here for North Putnam, they will go on the road to Indianapolis to face Covenant Christian. That'll be a 7 o'clock kickoff there at Zionsville Middle School where Covenant plays their home games. As for the South Putnam Eagles, they will be going back home just south here. Here in Putnam County, they will face another county rival, Greencastle. Also, in the Green Division Conference, Division of the Western Indiana Conference, so that will be a big division game, as this one has been as well for North for, for South Putnam. Yeah, you know, South Putnam uh, offense hasn't maybe been hitting on the cylinders that they had in the first two ball games. Uh, but uh, yet they've made the plays they've needed to make so far tonight. And, you know, pretty much with uh, under five minutes to go, looks like they've got this game in hand. Fake handoff and Mullen will be buried in the backfield for a big loss to bring up fourth down. So even though that's a loss, uh, the clock is going to continue to run. They're going to get a chance to, uh, you know, force uh, North Putnam to have to go at a pretty decent distance here. Uh, to try and put any points on the board, but uh, the clock is certainly not in North Putnam's favor here. So much so that they have to burn another timeout here. Yeah, you know, really, you, you don't have a whole lot of choice here uh, but to try and stop the clock uh, and give yourself an opportunity to have some clock to, to get the ball down the field, maybe get an onside kick. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tall order for sure, but... Uh, you know, stranger things have happened in the last four and a half minutes of football games. We, we've both seen it. So, uh, you know, there's, al there's always hope. There's always hope until that last uh, tick comes off the clock and you go over to shake hands. Even if you're South Putnam, you still take care of the football at this point. Absol time. Absolutely. You know, you've got to make sure you block. You know, North Putnam may be putting together some sort of a punt block here, uh, trying to get the right personnel out there, trying to make a big play uh, on special teams. And uh, if you're South Putnam, you've got to make sure you block and you've got to let the punt get out there. And you want to get down and cover, but you got to make sure punt doesn't get blocked here when you're backed up almost into your end, own end zone. So Chuck Sorrell and his offense on fourth down and long. They will punt the ball away. And it takes an eagle bounce right to midfield. This is Woodall on the return. And he gets... Bent in half there by Aiden Beatles right at the 40-yard line. Yeah, and also uh, Connor uh, Arnold did a very nice job there, too, of forcing uh, the returner back up inside because he actually had some yards right there. Uh, but give Connor Arnold a credit there for forcing him back up inside to, to Beatles to finish it up. So North Putnam will get at least one more crack at it here. At the Eagles 41. Kramer outside to Murphy. He has one blocker upfield, but coming streaking in is Caden Switzer. Yeah, Caden Switzer did a nice job. He read the, uh, the little bubble screen play to the outside. And uh, again, when you have a safety that can cover that much ground and fill out in the open field to make those types of tackles, uh, it, it does a lot for your defense uh, to not give up a lot of yards. Inside of four minutes left to go, Kramer back to the air. Rolling to his outside. 
Takes it up, and it's intercepted again. Wyatt Mullen this time. Flag on the play, and another one. So Mullen will slide down there at about the 15-yard line, but a flag away from the ball, and we have some tempers flaring here on the field right now, Coach. Yeah, a little, uh, you know, a little... Uh frustration here I can quite see who the penalty was was on I mean you could see that uh, looks like Braxton Woodall the defensive tackle was getting up into the face of one of the Eagles players yeah and he's being brought off the field here by the coaching staff of course he was uh, one of the Eagles players too was on was on the ground there and then it's just one of those things you know you've got a county rivalry things aren't going your way and uh, throw an interception and somebody takes a shot in behind the play but it has certainly been the Wyatt Mullen show here tonight here, Coach. 184 yards through the air, close to 100 yards rushing yeah. on the ground, along with two interceptions on defense. Yeah, he's really just been all over the field here. And I know we talked about, uh, you know, not as many two-way players for, uh, for South Putnam, but when you have a player, an athlete that's that good, uh, you know, you want to get him out there, and he sure has shown, you know, his versatility both on offense and defense. So with three and a half and some change to go, the Eagles are going to try and run as much clock as they can. North Putnam still has one timeout. Here's Mullen again up the middle. He breaks a tackle, gets across to midfield, and is shoestrung down to about the 48-yard line. Yeah, Mullen has uh, definitely got that the drilling kicked in here for the fourth quarter. He's taken a lot of snaps both on offense and defense, and you can tell he's in excellent physical condition because he's able to... Uh, uh, pick his feet up, run through some arm tackles, get a nice uh, run on first down, keep the clock moving, and allow South Putnam to, to run some more time. 22 yards on that scamper by Mullen. Just adding to his already full stat sheet here this evening. And the clock will keep on moving. Here's Harcourt. He punches ahead across the 45. Yeah, just run a little counter, down, down, kick out rep uh, the H back through and again a nice uh, little gain here more importantly uh, keeps the clock running and uh, puts uh, South Putnam in a good position here to pick up another first down so a five yard gain And again, the Eagles burning off all of this precious time. High snap, Harcourt has some blockers and gets upended across for the first down, down to the 30. Yeah, the counterplay to the right to Harcourt. And uh, again, great push up front uh, on the double team by the right side of the uh, South Putnam uh, offensive line. Get the wraparound blocks with the puller and the fullback and uh, Harcourt's off to the races. Harcourt himself has had a decent night running the ball. And it's another first down. And the clock keeps on winding. So as the result appears at the moment, as the run goes ahead for maybe a gain of a yard on the play right there by Harcourt, Chuck Sorrell working on his 35th win as a head coach here for South Putnam. It would also be his 39th of his career, putting him 500 on his career overall. Well, again, you know, we know he's done a nice job with the South Putnam uh, program and, uh, again, off to a really great start this year. You know, 3-0, putting points up on the board. Defense is playing well. Uh, again, this was maybe not the, the prettiest win, but a win's a win for sure. Mullen again will hand it off to Harcourt. And he's able to keep his legs chugging ahead, and he's close to a first down, and it looks like he'll get it. Yeah, just again running that uh, those gap scheme type plays where you've got down blocks and a couple of players uh, coming in to lead the way for Harcourt. And... Uh, uh, South, Mon or South Putnam's done a very nice job running the gap scheme, whether it's been power or counter tonight. So victory formation here for South Putnam. Again, talking about Coach Sorrell, he was the head coach from 2011 to 2013 at South Vermilion, where he did not 
have a very successful tenure. In fact, he only won about five games in three years. But he's come back for coaching here for five years now, since 2019 for South Putnam. And he's been able to build a decent program, 34 and 13 in, in his fifth year, now 35 and 13 with this result here tonight. And both teams will meet at midfield and that will bring us to a conclusion here in Rochdale as the South Putnam Eagles will come away with a victory to move to 3-0 on the season. Unfortunately for North Putnam, they move to 0-3 on the year. Yeah, that's a, it's a tough start for, uh, for North Putnam. Uh, you know, and they had opportunities tonight, just weren't able to, to uh, uh, get their offense in any sort of rhythm at all. And uh, North Put or South Putnam was able to come away with a, with a nice win. So once again, your final score, 28-6. to six. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Endeavor Communications. Internet speeds up to a gig. Find out more at weendeavor.com. Coach, it's been a pleasure to work with you again tonight, my friend. Always a pleasure to uh, to work with you. And, and you know, it was uh, we thought it might be uh, uh, maybe a, a more of a one-sided game. North Putnam played hard. They, they, they gave it everything that they had. Uh, South Putnam maybe didn't play as well as they played in the first two games, but they came away with the win, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters is they're 3-0 going into next week. Special thanks to our ISC Sports Network crew tonight. Deanna Edwards, Nick Rice, and Dalton Fox on the cameras. Car uh, Car Carlos Ocar of our our con and David Cohen on the ones and two, and our director, Vince Morales. For Dale Carlson, I'm Kurt Darling. Final score once again at 28 to Six, South Putnam knocks off North Putnam. You have been watching WIT Conference Football here on the ISC Sports Network. So long, everybody. It's time to supercharge your internet with ridiculous speeds up to one gig from Endeavor. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer-free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by the latest Wi-Fi equipment. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Contact and